So one of the things you guys brought with us is a <laughs> peg warmer toy line because, you know, the show's peg warmers. we got to talk about some peg warmers here. Oh, and boy, have we got some peg warmers for the, you. <laughs> these are a treat. We have some Mission Impossible figures based on the original movie. So that, if I recall correctly, the movie was good. It was. Yes, it was very highly. <laughs> These toys regarded. are not. And you guys oh, brought wow. something. We have something to talk that's about. That's incredible. Yeah. And it's sitting right behind. It's right back here. Yeah. It's a, it's actually has to do with owning a store as well. This kind of stuff isn't typically just in a collector's hand. It's in right. the hand of somebody who had worked for a company. What this is, if you want to explain what it is. Um, it is pack, it's original packaging art from LJN of Voltron. This piece was used specifically on the... But it's it, a it motorized is, Voltron. Yeah. It's, okay. it's LJN. A, it's original art that was yep. created specifically for those pack, that packaging. Peg Warmers is the code name for toys and collectibles with high supply and low demand. Join Kevin and his team of collector commandos as they discuss popular and not so popular retro and current toy brands. Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin. I'm Penelope. I'm Justin. And we're here to talk about toys. Justin and Penelope are here from Farpoint Toys. And today we're going to be talking about what it's like to run a toy store. Ooh, it's be fun. prepared. It's yeah. Be prepared for a heavy topic here. It, it's it's never never a dull moment. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> it's got to be easy, right? You're just playing with toys. Oh, playing with toys oh, all day. There's the trope. Yep. Mm, there we go. Let's get that yeah. out of the way fast. So you know they say that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. That's a lie. If you <laughs> love what you do, you work every day nonstop. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just I, to be, I believe the, it. That yeah. That that t- makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you don't want to make uh, any money to retire on. Uh, if you want to work from sun up to sundown, um. Um, work for yourself. <laughs> but if you love what you do, you have the passion to keep doing yeah. it. Right. Yep. So for our new segment, we're going to start with basically an event you guys have coming up. It's a toy show. Yeah. Yay. September 4th. Yes. It's a Saturday. Yes. yes. And it's Labor two Day. locations. The show. For the first time, yeah. Yeah, the toy show will be at two locations. Okay. Um, it's all, uh, we do this show every year, mm-hmm. but we're having it at this time this year because we're also reopening. The store right. has been closed since so last year. What It's a Toy Show is, yeah. is uh, our partner, Frank, who used to own It's a Toy Store. Door, right. What a, what a great name. We're, we're inspired. Um, <laughs> probably the most legendary toy store on the East Coast. I mean, he was, a, he was great at what he did, but he did it alone. And uh, as he got older, he had grandkids and just didn't want to continue the grind every day. Right. Well, one of the things he started that no one had ever done before was he always calls it, it was five dudes in a six pack of uh, Corona, Corona in a field. It's the first free to vend and free to attend toy show. Yeah, it's 100% right. free. So when we partnered up with Frank, we were great friends and we decided, you know, uh, he, he was closing one to get together with us and, and we've, we've always bought collections together. We decided that it's a toy show couldn't stop. When we, we brought it to Farpoint, it still had to be the free to vend, free to attend, big show. Because it grew to this mm-hmm. oh, yeah. widely it, known. It ended up taking up the entire town of Richland where he was located. Right. Yeah. And um, the fact that it's free to vend, it's not the typical toy dealers that you always see. It at, and, and, and good are, for those toy dealers. Yeah, there are some they of those They come folks. too. Mm-hmm. But you, get, you tend to get people with – they're clearing their basements or garages out. Yeah. And some stuff has popped out at It's a Toy Show. Legendary, Legendary finds. Like – Carded El Rayo, you know, from the superpowers, just stuff that Very you don't rare. typically see, and and at know, prices the people. You yes. never know what you're gonna find. Yeah, right? no. it's a lot of fun. I've and we, we enjoyed added attending. To, we added like food trucks to the mix and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And yeah, this year it's two two locations because we have two locations. We now. have two locations now because <laughs> we, you know during the pandemic and we we. We closed and then had an electrical fire, and there's this whole thing. You could look it up online. Uh, we've talked about it so much, it's hard to talk about. Watch yeah. our episode of A Toy Store Near yes. You <laughs> to hear uh, the be- behind the scenes. So our second location is in like a co-op, okay? Uh, and they have a big field too. So we yeah. said, Let, why don't we? We get a lot of people come to this thing. Let's spread the joy. It's only twelve. It's only ten miles away. Okay. Not so even. and come it's on visit. literally the exact same road. Same oh, road. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. super cool. Yeah. So you come shop ours, eat some food at the yeah. uh, at the. 80s metal themed uh, food truck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? He's going to be there and then drive up the road to Far Point 2. And, uh, nice. More goodness. It's, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be great. Just fingers crossed for weather. I'm a little yeah. jealous because we're only going to be at the one location. I want to be able to go back and forth between the two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not locked down. I don't care. I'm not going to stand behind a table. I'll go up, check it out. Mm. I'm going to be standing in front of that 80s themed food truck the entire time. I might, I might be there, yeah. <laughs> Dude, what a concept. Motley Q. Yeah. I hope nobody steals that. Uh, 
until he gets sued by a certain yeah, band, he's right. good for it. It's a great um, idea. Shout with the devil brisket, I think, is one of the things he's Some doing. Some stuff like that, yeah. yeah. It's gonna, Cheese, it's gonna be a... curls, 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 I think might be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that It's one. always good to have a gimmick. Yeah, it is. <laughs> It's going to be a great time. It's it's a great show. Yeah. It's always fun. And it coincides with our great... We've been closed since March of 2000. Yeah. Right. The pandemic closed us down. 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I fell asleep for a long time. Sorry. We've been closed since March of 2020 when the pandemic happened. Yeah. Right. Um, right and, before we could have been able to reopen in June, we had an electrical fire. Yeah. Uh, Storm-related electrical fire yep. at the shop, uh, which closed our doors and so we've been renovating now. ever since. We took the, you know, we a lot got damaged. Like our entire electrical system had to be redone, our HVAC system. HVAC. But while we've been closed, we took we took the opportunity to open 4.2, start a new um, online, like a social media based uh, claim sale, which is great. We have a lot of fun with it. We were able to we were able to keep the spirit of the store going to people like. It's like visiting the store. Yeah, we they sit there and talk. come to us, so we yeah. brought it to them. We have a great VIP group. The key, our community that rallied around us after what happened happened. Uh, it just blew us out of the water. Yeah, and uh, we've really been cultivating and bringing those people together. So then. we get to reopen yeah. for the first time in over a year. Yes. It's weird. It's exciting. Man. It it's is exciting weird. and scary. <laughs> that's like a, it's like we're opening again for the first time. That's what reopening means, I guess. It is, yeah. Right. <laughs> but I'm re-opening. just as nervous now as I was the first time we opened oh, our doors. I think I'm more nervous now, re- reopening versus yeah. being open because people like. Now they kind of know what to expect. And we expect, have an expectation. And we have to be that that or better. Before it was That's like, right. we could open with Listen, these and we'd be fine. <laughs> one thing we had, we never stopped doing over the last year and a half since we closed is buying. So we yes. got some shit. We got some and shit. And that is actually a really big thing because, I you know, there's been other toy stores that, that like, I would go to. And when they first opened, you, you're, like, blown away by the stuff they have. And then over the time, it's like... Uh, yeah, it's still fun to go there, but I'm not. I'm not as excited by the merchandise. Yeah. And if you're constantly buying, then the merchandise is always it's so exciting. In, it's so Our, important for us to have an experience in the store. You know, you can buy Mission Impossible toys online, but we want you to come to us to buy them because we have. Any, well, maybe you don't want to buy them, but um, there's an experience in the store. So right. it's not just changing out stock and making sure we have new stuff for people to look at. It's about how you feel when you come in the store. Well, the stock is super important. The though. stock is incredibly important. And our partner. <laughs> Coined a phrase: If you're not buying, you're dying. And and oh, what gonna, we do, we're gonna live forever. <laughs> there's no vendor for what we buy. Yes, right? I can't reach out to a company and say, "Hey, I need vintage Star Wars." Yeah, figures. that that's definitely the hardest thing about having any kind of a business where the product you sell is something that is no longer yeah. at retail. And Absolutely. we can't we can't budget it like a normal. Okay, no. our budget this month is ten thousand dollars for our whatever we're buying from whatever people. Right. This is we don't know what uh, we could get this in or we could get that in yeah. in, in the day. This, this is goes on with the minutia <laughs> of I guess we're talking about running a store. Yeah. Um, when the stuff comes, you have to buy it. Right. right. Because you don't know when you're going to see it again. So the money perpetually because like my wife said, wife and partner, there is no budgeting this. Um, the money comes in from selling something. Oh, look, a Star Wars collection. I have to buy it. The money goes back out. Hopefully in there somewhere a bill gets paid. Right. So the money is perpetually <laughs> cycling because you got to keep the stuff coming. It's yeah. it's the most important thing. You don't want to go to a store that's had the same stock being that's been no. picked at over right. months and months and months. It, or that it just diminishes over yeah. time. Right. And our partner, Frank, is, is – probably the best at that. That's why it's a toy store was so good. Cause he was, he is such a hustler, man. He's out at every flea market, at you know, four in the morning. I mean, when, when we're open, we open at noon for a reason. I'm not getting up at 4 a.m. That's Frank. No. He's There's that a reason guy. I work for myself and, and it's, <laughs> it's cause I can get up at noon. <laughs> All right. So one of the segments that we usually do on here is new to the collection and you guys oh, brought wow. something. We have something to talk that's about. That's incredible. Yeah. And it's sitting right behind. It's right back here. Yeah. That beautiful, my beautiful, my five children, they are, they are beautiful back there. So it's, it's, it's actually has to do with owning a store as well, because, uh, we have the opportunity because we, we are kind of known and people know us that, um, when people, this kind of stuff isn't typically just in a collector's hand. It's in the hand of somebody who had worked for a company. What this is, if you want to explain what it is. Um, it is pack, it's original packaging art from LJN of Voltron. This piece was used specifically on the motorized, help me here. Uh, motorized uh, Lion Bot. I forget which one it is. It's, um, but it's it, a it motorized is, Voltron. Yeah. It's, okay. it's LJN. A, it's original art that was yep. created specifically for those pack, that packaging yep. um, way back in... Yeah, it's not a print. It's not that. That's it's the original. The, and actually, if you look at the acrylic layover, it has you know in, in Japanese characters, 
It's like the okay from the people in the company or, or where they were shipping it back and forth. Yeah. And then there's like, the on the acrylic is um, notes of what they needed to print of it and right. to show other people. It's, it, it gives it provenance and it's it, it, it's, a, it's toy history. Mm -hmm. But yeah. typically you don't go to a yard sale and find right. this. Not usually. <laughs> this stuff came out in-house. Uh, it would typically come from, I don't want to say specifically where, because we're actually still dealing and, and yeah. buying we're, we're some of this collection. going back very soon. <laughs> yeah. And boy, wait till you see some of the pieces we're getting. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, if you think this is nice. <laughs> and the, the problem is we want to keep it all. That, yeah. that is know, a that's big the problem. Hard, yeah. I, that, that would be my problem. Every time a collection came in, the best items in that collection would be the stuff I'd want to keep. Yes. It's our problem too. And that's why we're also a museum. Yes. Because it gives us, you know, instead of saying, oh, that's on hold. Oh, no, that's not for sale because those things are not things you want to hear. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. That's part of our museum exhibit. It sounds so much nicer. <laughs> I want to talk about the museum in a little bit. Like, yeah. Like there's a whole thing about that. And it, and it works for us where it wouldn't work for other stores. Mm -hmm. I, I will, I'll explain why. But this, like I was saying, uh, it usually comes from in-house, somebody who worked for the company. Right. And we were lucky enough because we were kind of known that uh, the person called somebody they knew in, in toy collecting. Actually, um, they called, if you ever see the books, The Toys That Time Forgot. Okay. Um, the gentleman who writes those books deals with toys that were never made or pre-production mm. yeah, toys. Yeah. It's a great prototype, series. Prototype, unproduced. And he had bought some stuff from them. Okay. Unproduced card art. Not card art, but like the cards. Blister like, cards, yeah. Okay. Unprodu of unproduced toys. And they asked him, who buys this kind of stuff? And he had just watched our episode of A Toy Story Near You and said, you know what? They're close to you. Yeah. Ish. Mm. Call Farpoint Toys. Nice. And when we got this call, we just looked at each other and we're like, oh. It's one of those. Boy. It's the kind of call that you wait for. Having doing what we do, it's the kind of call you once in a lifetime kind of because we love the right. history, right? You know, I've, we've had a lot of Voltrons, and Voltron excites me, yeah. But to have a original piece of one of a kind art, I mean, you know, we talk about having a museum, that's just so. We bought a couple pieces, we couldn't keep them all, obviously. yeah. We like, well, you're not buying, you're dying, we've yeah. got to have money coming in, so we did have to let some of them go. But they went to great homes, which yeah. I feel really good about, and we got to keep my babies back here. And <laughs> I mean, that's that's like uh, short of it being. Combined into Voltron, yeah. having the five lines there together was is a really awesome. There was. Piece. Really, yeah. Yes. But again, that's what I was saying. The the kind of the best piece is the one that's the most tempting to keep. Sure. But if you're in a business situation, yeah, there were that's there were actually um, different versions of Voltron. So there was a, a Diruger, the the uh, um, Voltron two, Voltron. the vehicles. Okay. There was a great hero shot of that. There was a yeah. hero shot of Voltron with the sword. Nice. And then there was these. There were good. Uh, things about each piece mm -hmm. and we labored about what we, we wanted to keep about which one to keep what's really great about this one first of all the lions are beautiful you guys can see those um the fact that it has that acetate over it with the the in-house notes um the, like he was saying these stickers at the bottom with the asian characters that means that it actually went overseas to be approved disapproved and then sent back so this thing's seen seen some the, the, the voltron <laughs> one hero piece with the sword was probably the coolest looking piece but again, we spent a lot of money. Yeah, we needed to get it into a collector's yeah. hand to, and and to recoup some of our money, and it's, then we're going back up. We are. Right? And needed money to be yeah, able to go, to back, go back up because, because if you think this is cool. <laughs> so LJN, the, mm -hmm. the person obviously worked for LJN. Yeah. And think about '80s LJN and what we might be walking into, and that's all I could say. Right. But there are some toy lines, '80s LJN. It's not just Voltron. And it's great because we keep getting these emails like, oh, I also found this. And, and the, the person we're communicating with is so – it's what they did for a living. So it's right. boring. You know, it's right. like if you're a plumber talking about plumbing parts and, and they're just like, oh, I also have this. And we're like – No, it's like when you talk to <laughs> even like the voice actors on the old cartoons. It was a job. Yes. Yep. They oh, produced exactly. this art and they produced hundreds of yep. pieces of art in their yes. career and that's all it was because they didn't have the emotional and nostalgic connection Correct. to it that we all it's did. Job. Yes. Yep. Exactly. We talked to these people and we were – Fan, fan person yeah. nerding, <laughs> the big like SpongeBob eyes, like oh, and they were just they, was they were like, just yeah, like yeah, like whatever you like, know. Oh, we have this too. And oh, pulled you out. remember Toy Fair '87 when we rolled this out, and we're, we're all like, oh my god, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah. They, they were more interested in what they had for dinner that night at Toy yeah. Fair than right, the stuff right. they were yeah. rolling out. That makes Absolutely. total sense. Yeah. And just it just bringing it out and bringing it out and bringing it out, and like our eyes are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and. Having it's palpitations, just thinking about it. it, it, it to, an, to a degree, talking about, you know, doing what we do, running a store, there are people that, oh, my God, you run a toy store. And we're just like, yeah, we run a toy store. And although it is exciting, it's it's a job. Mm -hmm. Well, It's work. I've had conversations with friends before. Um, you see it sometimes on, like, Facebook groups when people will talk about what their grail is. Somebody that's like a new person to a collecting line 
And they're like, would you guys consider this a grail? And, and all the old time collectors are like, ah, it's not a grail. Everybody has a grail based on where they are. It's and relative. You, right. And when you own a toy store and you've had hundreds of collections go through your possession, yes. the grail item becomes a one of a kind thing. It whereas is. when you're just getting into it, like that vehicle you had for Christmas as a kid is a grail. That's a great way to think you of it. You know what I mean? It's Everyone has, yeah, it's has their own gauge on that. Our grails have changed so many times because luckily enough, we've acquired the right. grails from then. You know, right. they've come and they've come into our hands and out of our I hands. I still have a list though. But I do have a list. You know, <laughs> my grail is more about completing collections now than having specific pieces. My okay. grail is very selfish. You know, it's not. I want to complete my G.I. <laughs> Joe uh, you know, 82 to 94 figure collection. And I have all the, most of the really hard ones. If you asked me years ago, if a gold head, uh, steel brigade was going to be my girl, GI Joe. Grail. Can we talk about that figure for a split second? <laughs> when, so that was a goal of mine for many years. I wanted 82 to, to 94. Bought it five years ago. When I was collecting them, he was a paint variant, bro. That was the classification. So like the dark colored copperhead, I didn't care. Yeah. I just want all the figures. And for many years, I was proud to say I owned every 82 to 94, no. but I don't collect paint variants. Well, now the collecting community has decided that is a different release and a it different is. version, mm -hmm. and now I don't own them all. Mm -hmm. no. I have a Black Major knockoff one that my girlfriend got me, and I love it, but it's yeah. not the same I as the real thing. Major, yeah. It's nice well, to have that at least. There's five versions of the other regular steel steel brigade. Yeah. And it's not just paint. You know, they right, have different, different ways. Different chests and, and ways. Chests. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but that gold head is impossible and, yeah. and he was if i had known what i know now right five years ago i would have paid a couple hundred hours for yes him. absolutely but uh now i don't even want to say what he's going now right. you know complete by the time this episode dollars. comes out it'll be double whatever you're about to say the, the, his 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 gun sells for what he used to sell for yes you and know, i can't and i crazy. can't in my head a lot of the 93 94 figures are so overpriced now i don't even like the figures i just want yeah. to complete my collection right so in my head, I can't pay forty dollars for a complete like V four beachhead with the goofy yellow yep. jacket. But I, if I want the complete collection for the museum, mm -hmm. which is important to us, so patience helps with what we do. It does. Yes. And uh, we, I always tell myself, and it's one of the reasons I've passed on my grails in the past when I found them. It's hard for me to pay retail for something that I want because I feel like one day, eventually. Hopefully, it'll just walk in the door or we'll get a phone call or an email. But I've missed out on things. My my current grail is a wood grain D&D original box set. Okay. I could have gotten one for maybe $500, $600 a couple years ago. I was like, now nah, I'll find one. $5,000, $6,000 now. Like, just Wood shoot grain me. is the original. It's the original. It's the first okay. time D&D was ever. They put them together ever, by hand. Yeah, it's the first time D&D was D&D. You know? okay. yeah. yep. It's the first time it ever existed. And they put them in these fake wood grain contact paper boxes. And I have a white box, which was the next version. I have all the other stuff. I have tons of stuff, but that's like... How about Rapunzel? So I have... My Holy Grails have changed. Yeah. My original Holy Grail was Mimic the My Little Pony. I've okay. got her now, so we're good. Now my My Little Pony Grail is Rapunzel, who I passed on one for $200. She's now doing twelve or $1,300. She's the scratch. Yeah. She's, you know, to, right, to right. She was a, a, mail, a hard mail away. No one mailed away scratch for Scratch wasn't even a mail away. No, he no. Was he was retail, just retail, but... Yeah. She was a mail away. She was a hard one. Um... I might, another one of my grails was a four-player gauntlet arcade cabinet. I bought you that for Christmas. Which I got for Christmas two years ago. <laughs> How about <laughs> Cross that? Cross that off the list. Yeah, any Spoilers, anyone coming to the store when we reopen, we'll see it. But uh, no, so Steel Brigade is your, is that really your holy grail right now? No. No, completing the collection is a grail, but okay. Steel, he's the hardest one I still yeah. need to get. No, you, how many do you have of the five? Of the Steel Well, there's six. He's the six. Okay, how many of the six do you I have? I have four of the five. I think I need a D. And Don't then we I need all? The gold head. Yeah, but he's the D is is like a hundred or two hundred. You know, I was making a joke. It's just a variant. The it's D? tough. Okay, I know you were making, making a joke. joke. <laughs> I'm, I'm well aware. But then there's like weird like vehicle drivers from like from Ninja Force vehicle drivers from like the Ninja. So Re Axe. Red Ninja was the second to last. I just Joe, got one. I he was the second to last one I needed when I thought I had a complete set. Yeah, I got him, and then I got a Starduster. And again, I wasn't worried about the Starduster variants. Now I'm nah, just one because that's. <laughs> That was the level of my collecting. I just yes. wanted one every figure. Uh, but I got Red Ninja was the second to last Joe yep. in my collection when I was done. Yep. But now I need so to tough. again. So tough. Yeah. So you remember that, remember that vehicle just came in the mail the other day? And I said, I just need to figure. And I'm selling the vehicle. Was that the one that you pretended had always been there or you didn't just buy? No, that was back in the day I used to do that. Now we own a toy, <laughs> now we own a toy store. It's just, just like, yeah, they bought this for the store. Yeah, the Yoink. museum. Uh, <laughs> I kept the red ninja from that because mm -hmm. he had his axe. Uh, it was completely in nice yeah. shape. M mine came in a Chinese box. I ordered it off eBay 
probably 10 years ago. Wow. And I was like, yeah, I don't care about this vehicle. <laughs> I just want the guy. I mean, I still have the vehicle in the box. but Talk about a sickness. I don't even care about the figures. I hate them. Okay. For, if it's made after 93, there's like five figures that are decent, right? Once you get into the 90s with G.I. Joe, you know, they start getting less and less cool and more yes, and more I, colorful I and, and the spring-loaded weapons and... Crystal ball. I could care less about Ninja Force. So I, I hate that red ninja figure, but I need it. But you need it because it, it is it's, a sickness. It's such a terrible figure in the sense it that is. it's a big re- boots. It's, it's got a re- stripper boots on. Well, <laughs> repaint. It's a repaint of dice. <laughs> yep. But like the red ninja was a character in the comic. No, and it, it was doesn't look like anything no. like it. So it's it's like bad on every level. Yep. It, it, it could have just been called Dice. Yep. It could have been called anything else, but they had to tie it. And I have zero nostalgia for that. Because yeah. by 93, I was done. Yeah. Uh, 89 was, 88 was like my last year. You know, I, it was like G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe. Oh, Metallica? And I was done with toys. Right. So for any of those 90s Joes, I have no love for, but because they are... 82 to 94 is that That's that run. era, yep. Real American Hero run. I have to do it all. So we enable each other. Oh, yeah. And it's kind that's of- why we have a store. It's, yeah. kind, of, it's kind of a problem. And that's, <laughs> that's really how the store started. We're both collectors. And, you know, I made jokes about him hiding things. Uh, go buy it, please. I've always had that. <laughs> yeah, I traded no. for it. It's been there forever. I, I, I make jokes about it, but go buy the thing. And he'll tell me to go buy the thing. Yeah, and then pretty don't. soon I have 500 ponies where I only needed really 200 of them. So the other 300 get sold. He's got too many Joes. And that's how the business started, really. It is how the business started. Because yeah. we uh, we would buy – I'd buy lots. Yeah. This is probably the story of a lot of people who own these businesses yeah. do, do what we do. I'd buy a lot, keep what I needed, and sell the rest. Yeah. Right? And that that happens to a lot of people. I, yeah. I actually for many years lucked out. I had a friend who him and his dad would resell um, G.I. Joe collections. And they would pay me in parts to sort them. Awesome. So and you loved sorting them. It was. It was. Yeah. And I and I I could do it. Like I'd I'd take the Mark Belomo book, but I'd only need it to check a couple things. So they would be like, "We got a collection. We're buying pizza." I'd show up and just sit there and just BS with them for a couple. Do this for a couple hours, and it's like, "Here's all your complete guys." By the way, I need this like Worms helmet with the antenna on it, and they're like, "It's yours." I'm like, "Thank you." You know. (laughs) So that's it's fun. Kind of, uh, and w- one of the avenues this started was us going to hang in at a toy store and me doing that for Frank, which he had okay. Joe's. I, I would be like, man, let me go through your Joe's. And he would let me sort things and put things together for him. And he was like, how much is this? And I'm like, he's worth this, he's worth this. Then to the point where we'd be hanging there all day and BSing and it would it got way beyond talking about toys. Yeah. And a toy collection would come in. Now I had sat on his step watching him work and seeing how the the... the it, this is not Pawn Stars what we do. Right. Very rarely is it like, best I can do is $5. And some it, people come in and want it to be like yeah, pa- yeah. Pawn Stars. Yeah. And we don't, we can't do that. I would watch <laughs> how he would do buys and to the point where after a while people would come in. And sometimes you got it or you don't with that kind of thing. There's a, there's a oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to quote this dude, but the mm-hmm. art of the deal. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you never want somebody feeling red assed. Right. Which is why Pawn Stars is not real. Nobody would ever if that wasn't a TV show, nobody would ever go there. Right. If if he did what he did. You know what I mean? You gotta have, people have to be leave feeling like they did okay because they're gonna tell people that they did okay. And that's yeah. the, nobody leaves our store feeling bad about selling their collection. It, it's just the way Makes it sense. is. Right. It's the most important thing. Because if I overpay a little bit here, that just means another collection's coming. Mm-hmm. And it keeps the the gears rolling. So I would watch Frank do it to the point where people would come in with GI Joe collections. He'd be like, "Hey, why don't you just go buy that for me?" He would like use me, <laughs> like, "Okay, yes, senpai, notice me." Frank went from being our friend, from us just being customers of his, yep. to being our friend, yeah. to being our mentor, yep. to now being a f- our partner. And yeah. it's it, the evolution there was totally organic. There was not a moment where we were like, "We're gonna get all of his secrets." No, it, it was just, totally organic. I yeah. would sit on the steps and just soak it in, and and I, I realized. Wow, this is kind of cool. Never really thinking. We never really sat down and said we want to be toy dealers. Mm-hmm. We just started doing it on eBay, yeah. which sucks. And thank God it's a pain in the ass where we wouldn't have a business because everybody would do it. Right, right. <laughs> um, everybody, when people bring us collections, they're like, I was going to sell this on eBay and I tried and it was terrible. And yeah. we're like, thank God, because yeah. we know it's terrible. It's a full-time job. I can attest to that. <laughs> we're actually totally pivoting away. eBay yeah. is kind of going the way of the dodo. I mean, it's- yeah. it's, it's circling the drain for sure. It, it has its- important things here but we used to have up to like 2500 items at a time on ebay we're down to like 300 items okay forget it, 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 it we are not going to be beholden to mm-hmm. that ebay business model we're no. not working for ebay right mm-hmm. um it is a tool we will keep it for things here and there but not that so um we never planned on 
being toy dealers. It was never a thing we sat down and said, let's do this. We just kind of sold some stuff here and there. We were, you know. Just, it just, it's a snowball, you know. It started off as a pebble that fell yeah. down the hill and gathered more and more momentum, and we ended up. Once we opened in our local mall, Frank was 10 miles up the road. And I was like, oh, man, he's going to be really mad that we're having a little. Because I was working at a record store at the time. Okay. And the record store guys knew that we did toys. And he was like, you want a corner in the record store to do toys? And I was like, that might be cool. And it was the yeah. Christmas season, so it was the perfect yeah. time to, to bring toys into the mall. So Frank came walking in and looked around. And he was like, ah, cool. Just totally unthreatened. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He had yeah. box detergents. Yeah, different. Yeah. different we yeah. were yeah. nowhere yeah. in yeah. the same realm as Frank. But even a, even, even a... Even a stopped it, clock is right twice yeah, a day. Yeah, even, a, even a, so. a mutated squirrel gets a nut. You know what I mean? So we would start, <laughs> uh, we got a scratch. Yeah. Before anybody was really on scratch. And, and fr That's okay. another thing I regret selling. Yeah, I know. So that kind of thing happened. And then when collections would come in, like sometimes they'd be too big for us. Yeah. Before we were really rolling, you know what I mean? But thank God she was still working a regular job, which really the only way for this business to work is if you, if you are a couple, one of the partners has a real job. Yeah. Because you need the insurance and, and, and the stability. The steady income, yes. Yeah. When it's to both of you, there's not many yeah. people that this is it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even even people that it's just uh, one person doing it, there's usually another uh, avenue of But I do have there. to say, I ended up, um, my I worked in a retail store that, that was in Atlantic City. Okay. Atlantic City not doing so great. The, yeah. the, the entire company went, ended up going under. I was given a great severance package. And if it wasn't for that, Farpoint wouldn't have become what it ended up becoming. Totally. So for some people, it works. Yeah. Some people, it kind of works. <laughs> so we would, collections would come in when we were at the mall. Hey, put, you're in a mall. In, yeah. in, you get in, a lot of foot traffic that way. So much foot traffic. And not people so come in now, and they do the ooh, ah, oh, wow, I have this in my attic. Uh, wow, do you buy this? Well, yes, we do. Certainly. Uh, couldn't buy it all. Yeah. So we would call Frank because we were friends and yeah. say, hey, Frank, man, there's this collection. You want to go in? And he called us and we would start splitting collections up. It was up very there. reciprocal. And it was never confrontational or adversarial. It was always, always. just a great working relationship Sometimes with Frank. Sometimes you get uh, – there's a lot of people in Jersey who do this. And oh, yeah. People, it's, you know, it's a hotbed. It's, this area is – It's weird. It's but like the, it's the toy amount of, mecca. Toy mecca. You know yeah. why? Because we're between Philly and New York. There's just so many people. Yeah. And a lot of times you throw three or four of, of us typically in a, a thing. It's like a shark tank. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know if we all play well together. I haven't tested it. Um, we're all civil, but I've never bought collections with other people. But, but with us and Frank, it was just completely a uh, reciprocal, organic. organic. Yeah. We are the same person. What I've found over the years, like going to toy shows, is that you'll, you, like, if you go with a buddy or two, you'll find there's certain people that you work well with that you'll be like, yeah. hey, I saw this over there. Go check that guy. He has the thing you're looking totally. for. Or there's the, the, the guy you go with who's like, knows your top three things you're looking for and he bought them all and is going to try and like sell them to you yes. over the price. Like, what the hell? Or just buys them and say, look what I got. Look at my right. score. Right. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. And so, so you find those people you yeah. enjoy yeah. being in business with or just going to shows with or Same whatever. Thing. Yeah. yeah, and that's 100% yeah. frank. Because really being in business is collecting. Yeah. We're just collecting and, and selling it so, again. So uh, when we first started out, the one thing that Frank always said was, you know, you can't be a collector and a dealer. It doesn't work. Boy, did we prove him wrong. And we just kind of looked at each other and kind of laughed about it. And I see what he means, but I think we've, I think we've figured it out. He means you can't be married to the stuff. Yeah. You know, that he would like something, but the money would come in. He would need the money. He would yeah. sell it. We proved him wrong with that with the museum. It's a toy store. He'll never admit it, but had a museum aspect. It, he had what we call, he called the case room. This is like the talk about Frank day. It is. Um, <laughs> and, and the case room was like all the hot shit. Like, he would put all the really good stuff in there. I was like, oh, my God. You'd walk in and be like, whoa. Oh, how and much is that at Oh, is, I'm sorry. It's on hold. Oh, he would say it's on hold. <laughs> yeah. Because he didn't want to sell it at the moment. Yeah. There was never anything on hold. No. You know, I would say, oh, man, I really want that box Sky Striker. He's like, oh, Billy's paying that it's off. It's layaway. There's no Billy. There's yeah. no Billy. You know, he just wanted to soak it in for a while. Yeah. So we took that idea, and that's where the museum at Farpoint came from. Yeah. It's an exhibit. It's an exhibit. Yeah. Uh, and also, we went on a... We, we go on road trips every year. We okay. love to drive around. We love to visit other stores, yeah. especially out of the area to, you know, get the vibe, pick yeah. up some good ideas, commiserate. Um, and boy, do we all have the same stories of how eBay sucks, you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> specific customers. Yeah, yeah, well. um, but we went to uh, the world's biggest toy museum in uh, Branson, Missouri. Branson, Missouri. Okay. Yeah. And you ever get a chance? You're into toys? Go do it. All right. Um, it's not about quality. It's, it's about quantity. Yeah, they okay. have three. Like their Star Wars display 
it's it's a lot incomplete broken but it's not like a complete kenner collection but it's over a lot of uh 95 and yeah but it's a lot and it's Mm -hmm. cool and it's cool that they have toys from all eras and and it's it's two gigantic barns and you're walking through and you're walking through history and us we were walking through we're like this is walking through history why aren't we doing this we had had the idea before that but we really got very inspired by by what they were doing and how they were doing it. Yeah. They have a gift shop. Something to think about. I'd rather make money selling T-shirts and bumper stickers that say Farpoint on them than well, having to sell something like Voltron art. There's some inventory <laughs> that you can actually order. There is. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually correct. And one thing we have that a lot of other stores don't have is we are really on a direct route to Atlantic City and Ocean City. So we get the uh, seasonal shore tourism yeah. traffic. Yep. So, so it's like every year we stop at Far Point yeah, on oh, the way on vacation. The, oh, there's a yeah. museum yeah. there. Because, you know, another thing we realize at a museum is a husband will come in or a wife or, like, the, the kid with the parents. And the, there'll be the one collector, but the rest of the people will just be ooh-ahs. Yeah. And and we love the yeah. ooh-ahs. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have a table in our store to sit down and do yeah, this. Like this. This is yeah. this yeah. is far point. This, yeah. What we're doing right now, we do at the store. There's yeah. just not microphones or newt staring at us. Well, right? there, there is sometimes on weekends when we do our stream. Okay, but yes. That's when but we're trying no, to bring that to people. Yes. But yeah, this is this is it, man. We love this aspect yeah. of it. You know, yeah. we can talk No, forever. getting together with people and talking about toys is, and, is great. And, and connecting geeky. over it and, and, yeah. and you know, t- talking about what we love. So one of the things you guys brought with us is a <laughs> peg warmer toy line because, you know, the show's peg warmers. we got to talk about some peg warmers here. Oh, and boy, have we got some peg warmers for the, you. <laughs> these are a treat. We have some Mission Impossible figures based on the original movie. So that, if I recall correctly, the movie was good. It was. <laughs> yes, it was very highly. These toys regarded. are not. Yeah. Well, first of all, they obviously didn't get the rights to Tom uh, Cruise. Tom Cruise. Because if you if you just take a look at the that face on not. that guy. Yeah. Um, so the, I think the, cre- <laughs> the creepiest part of these figures is that they all come with a latex disguise mask, like an authentic. And in the packaging, it just gets kind of smashed flat. So there's just a creepy disembodied face in there. Uh, this is the probably figures? the best late of the latex masks because that's just like it looks like John Lennon from the Yellow Submarine movie. Yeah. It does. It, it kind does. Of looks like, or, um, um, Luigi a little bit from Mario and Luigi. Uh, Death Wish uh, a little bit like um, oh uh, Bron- Bron- Bronson. Bronson, yeah, mm, yeah. Uh, Charles not, Bronson, not Pierce Brosnan. Charles, <laughs> Charles Bronson. Bronson. I mean, if you asked me about if I was a toy designer who hadn't seen this movie because usually the designers just get a script. Yeah. yeah. What I remember about Mission Impossible, which I saw, like, the TV show, mm-hmm. I saw it as a kid, oh, yeah. occasionally. You know, obviously the intro was iconic, but for mm-hmm. me, the indelible mm-hmm. thing was people taking those latex masks off all the time. All right, so the so masks are important. If you're, a, if you're a toy designer and you're like, we're doing a Mission Impossible based on a new movie, of course I would be like, well, we got to get masks in there. Well, that would be one of them, not all well, of them. Why does the fireman need a mask, and why is that the fireman? I, like so, the fireman's mask is ridiculous. Look at the fireman's head. We have to talk about this figure real quick. Actually, if you put a long beard on it, it, it you can have it a little Kevin me. action. Oh right my there. goodness! We have to talk about glasses. This you, real quick. I want to see you rocking a handlebar mustache because mm-hmm. of this. It might be close. I hope you guys can like do a, an, an insert or a zoom in. The thighs on this guy. We've talked about them at length. They're scary. Yeah. He had one too many thigh master. Dude, uh, he does not skip leg day. No. no. And and it's, I don't. To a scary degree. I don't know what <laughs> fireman's pants are made of, but those are uh, uh, not spandex, right? Like, I wouldn't think, think that they're it's made. it's not spandex. It's like a canvas. Dude, he's mega thigh Tom Cruise. Oh, and did Tom Cruise have to, like, look at these? Did these get sent to the Scientology cabin? I don't believe and so. I, I can't <laughs> These, these may be the did. reason why Tom Cruise doesn't let people make toys of him yeah, anymore. A good, yeah, maybe. Fun- Funko actually had to pull the figure based on his character in the new Mummy movie. Because apparently it's in his contract. They can't do toys based on his characters. Okay. And they started doing one for that dark, dark, uh, whatever. Yes. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and that, that one got pulled. It's one of the, it's one of the more valuable recent. But we all pops. know now, right? We all know since Star Wars that toy licensing potentially. It's part of the contract. It's part of the very, contract and could, yeah. could be it very, be very, very lucrative. lucrative. Yes. Now thinking about Tom Cruise. I can't think of many Tom Cruise likenesses. Yeah. Is it's there part, any? It's part of his thing. Well, the, these ones don't really look like they him. They look nothing. But are like they him. where it started it in his contract? He's like, this is terrible. I don't I want don't anything. Maybe. There were Top Gun toys, but there was no Tom Cruise Top yeah. Gun toys. There was like yeah. a, a there ship, was no, you got, a helmet so you could put on, there was cosplay. A, there was and a darkness then, from Legend much later. Uh, I don't think he, there that was, was Tim Jack. Curry, though. Even the recent uh, Top Gun toys, they're just super generic. It's just a plane and a yeah, teddy bear. Yeah, there's a teddy bear. There's a teddy bear. Wow, man, I can't think of any Tom Cruise. No. 
Yeah, he's like he's like anti toy of him. So the the prototype pictures on the back look absolutely nothing like the actual figures that are actually included, because <laughs> the heads are the heads of the masks, but those are not masks. They're just mm, they're, okay. They're, but yeah, so this is a complete line of the figures from Mission Impossible, and they are they're god awful. They're bad. Are they all the the Ethan Hunt character, or yep. is there a bad? Yeah. guy? So how do you make a toy line without the bad guy or a bad guy? I mean, famously. <laughs> Toys have spoiled movies. Yes, and it happens a lot. Yes, yeah, so maybe they maybe they were just waiting for this to take off. Wave two was going to have the bad guy. Yeah, in. exactly. Yeah. And um, by take off, we have like five cases of these. We literally. And you want a complete set? We're going to donate this yeah, to this. Yeah, these, these are we want these the for Peg the Warmer set. set. That you, they should go on the uh, set. Yes. So Peg Warmer's nail has a donated set <laughs> this is awesome. of Mission Impossible. Start, card, mint on card. Start your own museum. You should grade these. We're going to get them graded. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you got it. From us to you. <laughs> So normally we switch over to the main topic here, but we've kind of been on the main topic. So we're still talking still about topic. having a store. How frequently do you think you get like a collection? I know you guys say you're constantly buying, but is it like, and I'm not talking like somebody brings in one little cardboard box, but like how often do you get like a big collection in? Is that is that monthly? Is that weekly? Is that every couple months? There's I mean, no there's no science there's, to it. Yeah. No, um, I mean so, – Every, we, we get phone calls every day yes. yeah. from someone with something, literally multiple calls a day every day. Um, at least That's true. At okay. least once or twice a week we, we do a buy. Now, it's not always what you might consider right. a big collection. Um, you know, it might be a little old lady with her old Barbies or it might be someone with some Mission Impossible. Yeah. There, there, it, t- it tends to be. You now, we've been doing this over 10 years now. With the big collections, there's like an ebb and flow. Um, I don't know if it's a thing. We have never really thought about like time of year or something, but once in a while for like a solid month, three or four giant collections pop. It just okay. happened with us. Was Exo Squad was a giant collection. Mm. Uh, mask that we brought in here last time was a giant Crash mask collection. Crash Test Dummies. Yeah, the, Crash the, dummies. the one no, the one guy's collection was Exo Squad and Crash Test Dummies. Oh, it was like, the same dude. That's right. So that once in a while, like one person will have their massive childhood collection. I would say in a year span, as far as mega collections go, uh. Five might be the average. Yeah, some years are better. Yeah. Yeah. Some years are less. But as far as smaller, and when we say smaller collections, like there's GI Joes in every collection. There's right. Star Wars in every collection. And when we say I mean? mega collection, we mean like multiple U-Haul trips. Well, and yeah. th- and that, there's a big difference too between someone's childhood collections that probably fit in a couple boxes, yeah. and then like a collector who is selling off, which a, is rare, close to complete it collection rare, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Once a, a collector is a collector, they're usually hip enough. To sell they're they're, they're going to start selling it on their own. Yeah. Or they know other collectors, they can pass it directly Although, to. Although right. sometimes your collection gets to a point where you don't want to deal with it. Like we said earlier, eBay, it, it's, a, it's a lot to deal with. And yeah. if you're just a regular person with a normal job, you may have a U-Haul's worth of stuff you Thank don't want to have to deal with. Yeah. Or yes. the vultures come out and, you know, uh, they'll buy the three best pieces. Right. And you're left with, uh, well, we tend to buy everything. We make yeah. an offer. We, we yeah. make a deal for everything. We'll buy your mini and we box. Have the, we we typically have the money to do it, where sometimes another collector won't have that money to do it. We'll buy your mitten box, JJs, but we'll also buy your Mission Impossible. We won't Correct. just take the Joes. We did not go after these. Right, of you course. know, they came in a <laughs> mega for collection. Yourself. I just no, they're terrible. This was a mega collection. <laughs> this was like a uh, twenty six hundred pieces. Wow, 2,800 yeah. 20, pieces, okay. one hundred and thirty plus tubs full. Yes. of just every nineties toy line. Yeah, so, you can think to, of insane. Just insane. Um, it's always exciting. That aspect of it is the best aspect of it because when you're buying a collection, it's like Christmas every time. Uh, you love going through it. It's mm-hmm. uh, my favorite thing is like when somebody has an idea what they want. I kind of br- we browse through the tubs or whatever because we can start a tub store at the end of this. Oh, we're gonna start Tubby's Tubs. When we retire, we're opening a tub store. We literally have an entire garage just full of just empty full tubs. of like I, I might need some. Roughness. I'm probably gonna be moving Can eventually. I, yeah, we got you. We got you. <laughs> we're gonna make hundreds of thousands of dollars on tubs. Um, so. You browse it, you get an idea what's there, an idea condition. But you know, you don't always have the time when it's a giant right. collection you don't, to put you out can't every tell piece. Everybody's complete hey, or whatever. Sometimes you got to. People yeah. want people want to get down to that kind of minutia, and sometimes yeah. you got to give them that time. Sometimes they're easy, and the number they come up with, or the number you come up with, you, I we know we're going to be safe, and they yeah. and they're happy. And this is a piece of industry. Uh, keep this to yourself. Oh yeah, this is. We have a thing sauce, called sauce, the happy right? number, right? And I typically ask that. I go through it. I kind of know where I'm at. And if you're, it's your child collection. I'm like, listen, before we start getting any minutia, what's your happy number? If I, if, if you could just, you're not going to offend me. If you could say a number to me and whatever it is, if I, if, if we're there, 
I'm not even going to argue with you. Yeah. You know, if you're super low, if it's 20 grand worth of stuff and you say $500, I am not going to let you walk like that because one day you're going to be, you're going to see a blue snag somewhere and be like, I had that. Mm-hmm. So you can't let that happen. Right. That's, and that's and not, there are stores that are. Yes. It. Yeah. There's, yes. There are places that will just rip somebody that's off. Not so you, you go first and, and you, you try and get out of the collector with their happy numbers. Usually it's like a mortgage payment or something like that. Depends how big the, yeah. the collection is. Yeah. And if, if, it's, if we're there within like a couple hundred bucks, it's not even an argument. Yeah. There's your happy number. And people expect, sorry, yeah. best I can do is 250. The That's what we stars. talked about, the Pawn Star thing. It's not. And you and can't. that usually starts things off well because, man, in the first five minutes of buying a collection, everybody thinks you're out to get them. You know, everybody thinks you're out to take advantage of them. When that's far, farthest thing from the truth, because once you get a bad reputation, nobody sells to you. Right. And we've been doing it over 10 years, and I don't think there's any bad reputation so far. And if you're not buying, you're dying. So if that... Dries up. Not one collection is not worth the bad reputation. No. Plus, yeah. it's just no way. It's no way to be. You just can't act like that. It's not. No. I, well, listen. I'd love to pay a dollar for an action one. I mean, who wouldn't? But, uh, but that's just not. It would be a great story. Yeah. I mean, that, that might be the one thing I could do because I could just retire. Yeah. You know. Just be done with it. And then you don't have to buy anymore. Okay. So yeah, bring your action ones to us. Yeah, we'll give you a shiny nickel. But where was I going with that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> where were you Talking going with this? Talking about the buying of it and, you know, uh, trying to get out of the person what they would be happy with. Because you, you want every deal at the end of the day. The most important thing is that the person leaves happy. Yeah. The stuff is the stuff. There's always more stuff. Yeah. Um, but if they leave happy, they're going to tell two friends. If they yeah. leave unhappy, they're, they're going to tell, tell 20 friends. Yeah. yeah. They're going to put it on the internet. Sense. They're going to blast you. You know, it's just not worth the uh, uh, any of the negative. And sometimes you just can't help it. You know, there is a percentage where nobody's ever going to be happy. Um, well, that's anything you do. Yeah, I, I don't mean so, so much as, as buying a collection. I mean, like, we've been closed for a year. We just got a bad Google review because we're closed. Yeah. yeah. Like, dude, we had a fire. We right. got a one-star review because we're closed. And okay. that's some of the stuff that you deal with in this that's like the, uh, but that's taking any, the wind it, out of my sails. It really is anything you do. I mean, if you work at McDonald's, there's going to be 1% of people that throw french fries at you. It's no matter what you do, there is going to be that. There are some people that are just crappy. Yeah. <laughs> so you a, take the good with the bad. The good really outweighs it. The good really, really outweighs At least, the bad. luckily enough for us. For us, yeah. Or we wouldn't be doing this. We yeah. would have given up. I mean, after the crap we've been through in the last year, if we didn't love doing this and if people didn't love what we do to help keep us going, we would have given up. What's really cool is we found out that like, and we, we kind of know, but not to this extent, and I say it in um, the, the Toy Store Near You episode, that... Sure, this is all just like stuff we put on shelves, but it actually like matters. It all brings us, there's a community because mm-hmm. of the stuff. So the stuff isn't as important as like the the community and the feeling and the shared experience. Yeah. It does. So yeah. I, like, that's a great way to put it. It yeah. has energy. In a super like weird connection type of thing like that. Like I have a whole bunch of filmation cells from He-Man. And oh. streamed at my house. Oh, and oh. I, I do like a Christmas party every year where I invite a bunch of my coworkers over. Yep. And one of my coworkers, who's basically old enough to be my mom, she's like, "Yeah, I used to watch that after high school when I got home from high school That's every day." Awesome. And I was like, "I watched it before I went to elementary school." Rotoscope. You know, like, weird, <laughs> weird like I connection. Knew what rotoscope was. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. So good. It is so good. Yeah, that's awesome. But right. everybody finds that weird yeah. common ground on yeah. that yeah. stuff. It yeah. is. And pop culture, man. Yeah. You know, we're, we're in it. Even if you don't realize you're in the pop culture, you're in a pop culture, man. Everybody is now. I mean, I don't know a single person that doesn't like a Marvel, one Marvel movie or, or care about one cartoon or there's always, there's something. All right. So in an imaginary situation, somebody brought in a collection. There's like two boxes or three boxes here of, of 80 soys. What two or three things are guaranteed are going to be in there because they're in everybody's collection? There's going to be a McDo- McDonald toy of some sort. Some sort of McDonald's I don't toy. know what it is. Probably one of the transforming foods. Those are great. The yeah. di- the, but the dinosaur one. The not, dinosaur. Not, the, not the older, better ones that are transformer transformers. Gotcha. It's going to be a dinosaur. Weak way. Mm. Carded or loose. Okay. <laughs> He's worth the same no matter what. No matter what. I bet he was a peg warmer. <laughs> Probably. Lobot. Weak way maybe, is in or, or Lobot. every... Or Lobot. Every, yeah. I'm Lobot's gonna, in I'm, there too, but we quake because Return of the Jedi. And his card's always beat up. Because mm-hmm. um, he was on the peg forever. Yeah, yeah probably. Or he went in the yeah. bin along with Mission Impossible. <laughs> what else is in every collection? You said earlier that there's always at least one G.I. Joe. Yeah, typically. Uh, a, a broken thumb, straight arm or I'll something like that. I'll tell you what's like probably not in there, any girl toys. And okay. I hate to gender toys, but, but toys that were marketed toward girl children in the 80s. Um, there, we've been doing this over 10 years and we've only gotten one or two collections of what I would call girl toys in, okay. in that, 
entire time. Tough. Yeah, well, because yeah. that was going to be my next thing was like, what would you think should be in these tubs but is never in tubs? And that's interesting. That's a girl's toys. And I wonder if that was just because girl, for whatever reason, girls didn't hang on to this stuff as much. I know. No, I think they did and they do. Okay. Like, uh, I can only speak for myself. I have everything I ever played with as a kid. There's like two but, things but that But you broke. are still a collector. I'm talking like. That's true. Your average so what person we, that just has stuff in the attic, maybe the girls didn't hang on to as much. No, I've, that's the thing. They don't come out of the attic. Oh, yeah. it just stays so, there. So yep. we think, uh, based on, you know, the time doing this, that us boys, and as we get older men, you know, we're like, oh, I need some money for this. I want to, you know, paint my Mustang. Metallica. Okay, I want to buy a guitar. You know, yeah. we, oh, I need some money to take this girl out so I can tell her about Thanos. Um, <laughs> girls typically don't think the monetized way for their toys. They think, okay. oh, someday I'm going to give this to my kids maybe. Yeah. So and the I, stuff I tends to sit. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It doesn't come out. I do think that's it. And mom was also much more likely to throw out the G.I. Joe she stepped on or the, the Star Wars gun. Or they get gun. passed to Cousin Joey. Yeah. Or they get thrown out yeah. or given to Cousin Joey or put in the yard sale. Yeah. But you step on a My Little Pony, eh, you just throw it back in the tub. It doesn't hurt your foot. <laughs> it doesn't get vacuumed up. That's another thing It's always in a collection. A broken transformer. Yeah. Uh, typically like Prowl or, or one of the Dotsons because the tops break tops. off or broken Jazz. Okay. Yeah. But a broken transformer or, or a loose and complete part of a Constructicon like, like Scrapper. Just one, just one of them. Yeah, one of the main construction cuts. I love, I love that we can get into minutia here, and you know exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. Well, that you, so that that was one of my personal problems with Transformers. Like, I love the idea, I love the concept, I loved the cartoon, but the actual playing with the toys, I never got into them because that's what I would have. I'd have one Constructicon, one Protect a Bot. I'm like, what? Why? Dude, same. I never had any of the cool ones. Never had any of the diecast metal guys. I was to, to this day, he's the Transformers guy. I, I don't even touch them. I'm afraid default, to. Though. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. I, I, I mean, actively refuse them. It's I don't a great break brand. Them. I can't. Oh, no, can't it's awesome. It. And the They're show is amazing great. toys. But yeah, I loved the toy, the, the show, and the toys didn't really match it. And so to me, as a kid, I just kind of. No, not until did, Masterpiece. Yeah, it didn't really keep my did interest. Did they start that much. matching the show? Yeah. I mean, uh, best toy movie ever? Probably. Yeah. You know, the 86 Transformers movie? Yeah. Phenomenal. Um, I had some of the toys. Uh, I was a dumb kid, though. And, you know, you needed to be smart to transform those things. Yeah. And I didn't want to read the instructions, <laughs> and I would immediately break them. I broke. I mentioned Prowl because I broke Prowl. I was like, oh, cool. My mom had a 280ZX. My okay. stepdad was a cop. So it was a mix of the two things. Yeah. And I transformed them and broke them, and I was like, wow, that's... That sucks. That's I think that mix of diecast them. and plastic also lent itself to breakage. It did. Because Where they came you'd together. think you could push really hard because it's metal. No. Nope. But mm -hmm. all the joints were plastic yep. and kids would snap the stuff. So now, when you when you get into the Transformers nowadays, like Masterpiece or uh, any of them, you, uh, you have to watch. Maybe I'm a just video. showing my age. <gasps> you have to watch a You need YouTube a PhD breakdown. in engineering. Dude. I don't know how these kids do it nowadays. Well, they, they got like smart. Woman. In 90s with Beast Wars, when they yeah. did the ball joints. Yeah. Because then they opened a whole new avenue. Yeah. And now, like, the pegs and to get them together, boy, it's I fun. sit for hours. Because we in the store, we like to display them in vehicle or alt mode. Okay. Uh, so every Transformer we get, I got to see if it's you complete. figure that out, yeah. And then get it into alt mode. And, like, for hours, I just, like, this big, folding, beefy gorilla. Folding, folding. Carefully... <laughs> Transforming Transformers. I'll leave, come back. He's still there. Folding That's the fun part of it. The fun part is when like we're not in a rush to like get make money because we we're always in a rush to make money. Sometimes you get a little breathing room and you sit with the collection you just bought and you spread it out and you're like you want to take the hype picture right. Yeah. So you sit and you you transform the toys and you clean them. You put the weapons with them. You see how complete things are. And that's what I mean by Christmas morning. It's the fun. You do it with you clean the pony's hair. I do. I hate that we have these gender roles. I, I do hate. I, I clean ponies hair too. My Little Pony. My Little Pony was my thing growing okay. up. Okay, that makes sense. Um, as an adult, I now collect. Uh, as a as well, a collector. Well, you're a He Man. You and your sister are He Man. I also had a very massive collection of He Man. Well, and that was and the I reason they made Shira. They said there was just a, a huge number of girls that were into I into. Loved Shira when I was a kid. I I I she He Man got me into Shira. Right, but not Mattel, the other way around. Mattel yeah. made Shira because they yep. knew. Yeah. There was like a big percentage, like forty yeah. percent of the sales were going with girls. So like, let's make it specifically for it her. Was but brilliant. why? Uh, I understand the combable hair because that was a a, a girl toy Play playable thing. Yeah. Um, why not use like the Tila sorceress sculpt? I don't to understand get them to that. mix better. Why was Bo yeah. not 
Eternian looking. I think I think the real reason for that is that the boys department came up with the concept and the girls department said you're not making girl toys and they took it and so they wanted to separate it from oh you know but as, as going back and collecting it now how cool it would be if they really did yes. cross pollinate well better. and 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 with the the horde being Master the Universe yes. characters. And like, they released them with Master the Universe and not with she because, because again, that was she, like little girls the boys, little girls don't want to play with bugs, quote unquote. Well and and <laughs> and Filmation got the Shira plan and they're like, there's no bad guy. We need bad guys. And Mattel's like, well, this is the next no, round of bad guys. She, okay. The bad guy today is uh she learns a lesson about folding clothes. Well no, you've like, got, I'm surprised they didn't go down please, that path. The, uh, Catra is catty. That always bothered me. She's she's, she's the, the jealous catty one. Beauty. She's jealous and catty. It's okay. We know you. It's it, okay. It bugs me. You, it bugs you, me. You but I do. A little but bit. I do love the brushable hair and the different outfits. Sure, and that's like the girl play. <laughs> he man doesn't thing. have brushable hair, and he does not have changeable he outfits. If, if he man had brushable hair, I would never played with him. That's. I don't want a toy with brushable yeah. hair. A brushable hair. I mean, I may have been influenced by Shira as a child with all this hair Possibly. I have now. Um, I was definitely influenced by He Man. Yeah. Have you watched the new show? Yes. It's so good. It's good. I really enjoy it. A, it was good. I love it. Everybody's mad. I what, dude? But her yeah. incels are mad. Yo, the fandom, every fandom are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> you were somewhere I said, I'm sorry that your 22-minute homoerotic toy commercial isn't exactly the way yeah. you remember it. Oh, yeah. oh, Tila wasn't an important character. Yes, she was. She was in every episode. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense. Her, her, her arc. Th this arc makes total sense yeah. that she found this out and got upset. Dude, I yeah. love it. I, I like Orko now. Yeah. yeah. Dude, he was like, oh, I couldn't, I say, always, I couldn't say Oracle. And I, I was like, like Orko. Yeah. Oh, Marco, I like you. You're not just an annoying turd now. Yep. It was good. The only thing I didn't like about it is I thought it was going to be a self-encapsulated thing, and now I have to wait. Yeah. Well, and that, I love so Mark that, Hamill. That's okay. Go but ahead. he was very Joker. Yes. Like it, it was. It was a very. It wasn't like Mark Hamill as um, the Fire Lord Ozai, mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, that's Mark Hamill, but it's a different yeah. vibe. He had a very Jokery kind of vibe. Uh, you know, Skeletor and Joker were yeah. very close. I, I wish whoever was doing the voice directing had watched it more carefully because there were times where he sounded more different yeah and times where he sounded but more then when he laughed right. you were like mm -hmm. yeah my favorite yeah. thing about the show was the fact that wonder bread he-man was there yeah. they they put in a ton of those that great was, characters yeah. which the was fact, great deep cuts i mean deep cuts but then to put wonder bread he-man in there too yeah that was just too much it was great i i feel though that they really kind of shot themselves in the foot by not putting it all out at once I, because, see, I feel the same way because everyone that's upset about it has yeah. only seen half the story yeah. yeah and we all know that stories have an arc yeah and things will get resolved and things that we don't like like characters being dead yeah. We already yeah. know that there's no such thing as dead in any They're not going to they're not going to kill the main character of the brand forever. No, I can't. And even no. if you think that <laughs> you think that Sheer is all of a sudden, I mean uh, that Teal is all of a sudden is going to become the new He-Man. That's what they're afraid right, of. Right, right. the little I balls mean, are shrinking up into themselves and they're like, "Oh, my <laughs> He-Man is gone. He's coming back. He's the golden boy." Right. You know what I mean? That's it's He-Man and the Master of the Universe. I also really love the difference. Adam is obviously very different than He-Man. Yeah, it's not obvious. Whereas, I think I think yeah. that one I of like the things that. that led to people being upset about it is that Kevin Smith said that it's a follow-up to Filmation, and it's not uh, totally, and I knew it wouldn't be, that you knew they were going to put 2000X elements into it because yeah. that show is the better show. I haven't watched it. It's less nostalgic, but it's it's amazing. Yeah. And it's a shame it never got its third season. But one of the best things it did was make Adam and He-Man look different. Which is important. And yeah. they put that into this show, and that's a good touch. Like, that... The only reason they they looked the same in the other show was because it was cheap. And, yep. and let's face it, Filmation was about keeping animation in America. Yeah. And, and so they had it was to cut the corners. Six and seven year olds. Right. It was yeah. it was disposable media. Yep. But they they did the all animation here. Nothing got farmed out, and so they had to find. They changed his iron cross, and it yeah. made the toys easier because uh, right. it's just the same head sculpt, same body, just painted different colors. Yeah. Which is something My Little Pony was famous Those for. Those toys are so dude. He man. Just Every out, toy line color. now has. You've been a collector for years. Yes. What has happened in the last five years? And even at the pandemic, it's really exploded. But even like G.I. Joe in the last five years, there's no property really compelling it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just the collectors have gone insane and the, and the prices have gone. What has happened? What's your opinion on I, it? I feel I'm like- I'm asking you questions now. So I feel like people <laughs> had a lot of time at home. People got extra money by either- I mean, not everybody, but some people were getting extra unemployment. Some people were not spending the normal money they would spend just going out and driving around, going out to eat. And some people were getting, you know, 
rebate checks from the government. And so there suddenly became this like, I'm bored and I have a little bit of cash. Let's look on eBay. Let's Retail therapy. Let's go wherever. Yeah. yeah. And, and, people started. and also shows like the toys that made us yep. have made things go. And I think a lot of people have wanted to go back to a simpler time. Oh, oh hey, I had this toy when I was a kid. I remember being a kid. There was no pandemic. Everything was fine. I I didn't have to worry about money. There's let's, no insurrection. Yeah, let's, people, people were just looking. Let's for, go back to that. Well, there might have been insurrections when I was a kid. I don't know. Pe- people were looking for you know attention. anything that that took them back to a simpler time and, yeah. and toys and, and the Marvel movies and yeah. nerd culture. It's just it's just it whole, all goes mm-hmm. together. I'm hoping that there doesn't become some sort of. Uh, uh, stress or tired tiredness over it. What's the word for being tired of something? Just getting you know, fatigue. Fatigue. Yeah. yeah, well, that's that's what worries me with the fan bases that get so angry at all the media. The media, like the new media, like the, the, the He-Man show or the Snake Eyes movie or whatever, is how you bring new people in. And they got to try something a little different. Unfortunately, they, they tend to go too different mm. to keep everybody happy. But if you don't – if you're not doing anything new, it's kind of like you're – if you're not buying, you're dying. If you're, if you're not doing something to expand or reinvent. the brand yeah. or reinvent yeah. it, it's going to go away. It is. Why are we not talking about like Buck Rogers ray guns from the 50s? Because we, that's away. not we talk about this yeah. a lot. brought back up. Yep. It's the right. howdy duty effect. Yep. Eventually, unless you keep something fresh – or it gets bought by Disney. <laughs> it just cycles through and eventually goes away. It's it, it's not collectible. No one wants it. It's not collectible. Well, it's not even an antique. It's just gone. Back to the Star Wars. It started everything. Uh, these 80s franchises have been reinvented and reinvented and yep. reinvented and reinvented. We're, uh, it's not going anywhere. The stuff we grew up with, it's, it's the golden age of toys and, and media and all that stuff. Movies as well. They're, I mean, they remake every 80s movie. Yep. Yeah. You know, uh, there's something, it's, I think it started with Star Wars. Previous to yeah. that, that nobody's really interested in the in the yeah. pop culture that existed before that because it was a different pop culture kind of. It wasn't mm-hmm. as uh, I don't know why it was different. It was it was crap for kids. Yeah, and it Star Wars I think was one of the first things that really transcended. I mean, my my sister was a little bit older than me. She's going to see Star Wars. My mom's into Star Wars. Star Trek to a degree. I did that in the sixties as well, but. It just it, it transcended. It didn't matter whether you're girl, old, young, a guy, whoever. So a, a thing related to the the He Man show too is that I look at is you had the filmation show where He Man fights Skeletor in almost every episode, you know, and nothing really changes. You had the 2000 X show where he fights He Man and Skeletor fight each other, and then he fights the Snake Men. Uh, you had the the 90s in space new adventures where he fights Skeletor again. Nothing really happens. And then people are mad that they somebody was finally willing to say like, let's do a different story. And it's not yeah. so different. It's no. not so different. Yeah, He's still, still fighting. in the universe. He, yes. They didn't put him on Earth with Courtney Cox. Right. Yeah. But like, uh, uh, what a Quil- shame. Quildor. Like, let's let's have Blade. something happen. Yeah. That yeah. isn't always just the same people fighting. And also, I'm going to make this maybe a little more mature. Or maybe you guys are a little grown up now that you can deal with something that's a little bit different. Or right. God forbid, let's make it a little more inclusive. Let's have an, another lady character. Let's have oh, oh here comes King, our incel hate mail now. King King Grayskull is a is a African American guy, right? Or a person of color at least. Uh, yeah. Why? Right. Uh, oh no! Oh God! You ruined my childhood. Well, why? And, and that like <laughs> King Grayskull is is in like two episodes of Two Thousand X. Is he? He's not really. I mean, unless you were a kid from in 2000, he's not part of the traditional He-Man fan base childhood. Yeah. They picked a character that, like, has a little history with the brand, but not... So my introduction to change. those characters, the stuff that wasn't really in the filmation, mm. right. my introduction was the Master Universe classics. classics and I mine. love the fact that they brought so much stuff. Awesome. Classics is... Classics is one of the best toy lines ever made. Dude, we made a diorama really depend- yeah. uh, all it's, because it's of incredible. it. It's incredible. And so the fact that they brought so many characters into that line and now that all the other people that license He-Man, Keep whether it's the going. Pops, whether it's yeah. the, the reaction figures, whether it's this show, the fact that they're using a lot of these characters that were very obscure, that's great. Yep. That builds a brand that expands Certainly. the mythos, yeah. which is what And you want the mythos needs. expanded, right. yes, no doubt. Yeah. The more you know, you've got, the better it is. Yep. Yeah. You can't fault. A, a new creator from creating some characters, especially characters that don't have a lot of history. They're not buried in lore, you know, like Snake Eyes, to do an origin story on that guy, 
man, you better read those comics because fans want that. If you did, yep. if you did a yeah. beachhead origin yeah. story, guess what? Most people don't know that much about the character. No, you smells. have a lot more. You, right, <laughs> Wayne Sneeden. He doesn't use deodorant, but you have wiggle room on that story. Yes, <laughs> Snake Eyes is. I mean, he is the he's the Optimus Prime. Right, you know, he's uh, he is the known character. Uh, and I'm like I always say, I'm fine. Tell me a good story. Yeah. I'm not so beholden. No. To the stuff that as a kid, just I just want a good story. Just tell a good story, and you will get people that like it. And but you have to listen. Say. The people that are going to go to that movie are really the fans. Yes, yeah. you know, uh, Snake Eyes is isn't he's not Optimus Prime as far as like world. You know, the Transformers is a a, a worldwide brand. GI Joe is not really a worldwide brand. They had to rename it was Action Force International right? Heroes, right? Uh, so you got to kind of aim at those specific. Uh, guys who are married to that stuff in, in, in some ways can't just completely shit on them, right? Because if you do, the backlash is going to be it made like two dollars, I think. Like the Star Wars new movies. Oh, mm. yeah, they, they, oh boy, they pushed. Eh. They Here's a conversation. Oh, yeah. the so oh. characters running the a summit. toy store. Yes. Um, oh boy. So I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, you said give that. me a good story. What's a what's an item or a collection that came in that had some great backstory to it? Like you mean the the toys story themselves to from the people? Like, yeah, like somebody just has you know they told you some st- little story about it. And you're like that's amazing, or or you know there was something unique about the collection. Um, all right, well, here's uh, we in a weird the, way. The comic story, it's sad. That's a good one. Because that kind of talks story? about us being grief counselors in addition to being toys. <laughs> Are you toys telling the grief counselor? Because right. that's a good line we so, use. So um, we got a phone call. Uh, I have uh, some comics that have been in my family for quite a while. Uh, many years ago, my nephew passed away. He was only 17 years old. These were his comics. Okay. Um, Boy, the jokes stop here. We've been, <laughs> we've been holding on to these until the right time. We're ready to let them go because, you know, we, we're ready to, you know, maybe take that big vacation or, or maybe even retire. It's time. So we're like <laughs> – oh, mean to laugh. We're like, oh, my – okay, yeah. please bring them in. You know, I, I can't wait to see what this yeah, is. Yeah, you get that. We've been doing it long enough that we know better. But yeah. you, get, you, you get that call typically and you're like, oh, man, let me get the bankroll ready. There's going to be some silver age. Because you never know here. what it could be. Right. So, you know, this – it's a woman comes in with her two sisters and it's, it's very grim and very sad and – here are the books. We're ready to let them go. And she puts them on the counter, and it's Death of Superman. It's Spawn number one, I think, was the best book they had with Spawn mm. number one. Yeah, and there was a Spider-Man 300 now. Was there? There was one good book in Okay. There. I feel like a little better about Spider-Man the story stuff. now. Okay. Um, First Venom. All right. Yeah. So, but we went from It buying, certainly wasn't going on vacation or retirement. No. Right, right. This is... So we went from doing a buy, and we're very sorry for your loss, to... I'm literally like crying with them in the in the it in the parking so lot. It's so hard to tell somebody <laughs> who has an expectation of something. Yeah. yeah. That their thing, your Hess truck from 1987 that I know you kept it in a beautiful box in the closet and and It's still mint. It's still mint. But it's still mint. It's worth $15. Yeah. It it's very hard. And sometimes you look on eBay and people ask ridiculous money so people think it's worth that. Right. Yeah. Um it's hard, man. I and it's hard. hard it's hard yeah. because you don't want them to think you're trying to hustle them, first of all. That's right. the most And it's hard thing, because yeah. they have this expectation. And you're kind of like, she calls it grief counseling. You know, guy yeah. thought he was going to come in and pay his mortgage with yeah. a Hess truck. And <laughs> Now I'm laughing. <laughs> and I'm, I'm passing on. I like, yeah. I, you know, just give it to your nephew, man. He's not going to play with it either. And it's not going to be worth anything yeah. when he gets older. But <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. And that's, that's, the, that's one of the hard things about this. And there's that's... Those are the collections that are every day. Right, right. Do you buy any Beanie Babies? Do you buy Beanie Babies? Are you How buying Beanie Babies? How about open Barbies with no clothes on? Listen, no one is buying Beanie Babies. No. Everyone's selling them. Yeah. yeah. No one is buying them. Matter of fact, if you look at like- um, <laughs> We sound so shitty. The part-timers who do this, you know, people go around and like stamp up flyers and stuff. Yeah. Sometimes those flyers say- No Beanie Looking babies. to buy vintage toys. No, no Beanie, Beanie Babies. babies. No yeah. Hess trucks. Yeah. It used to say no sports cards, but the yeah. sports card market has gone insane. It, yeah. 90s we, sports cards used to be worth nothing. Now all of a sudden, yeah. we still don't do. 90s still comics sports used to be stuff. nothing. Now all of yeah. a sudden, yeah. yeah. I mean, there was there was exceptions to the rule, right? You, Deadpool. You have to get people to the right age, also. Like, yeah. like finally, the kids from the 90s are are getting to that age where they're established in a career. Hey, 90s kids, yeah, <laughs> come get them. <laughs> we have Mission Impossible, baby. If we got you, party if like you, a fireman. If you'd like to party like a fireman, please. Um, Man, but I, you, I, you know, I wish this was a uh, Superman. Uh, so we had this discussion the other day, and I got—I think I, you called me a hoe, I think, if I remember correctly. Because Henry Cavill in the bathroom in that scene makes me feel things. You can hoe for Henry Cavill. I'll yeah, fight him in good. the bathroom. Yeah. Naked. 
I love in the butter. trailer when he goes like that. <laughs> that is this. That's, that's exactly this what thing. we're talking when he, about. When he like yeah. fixes he his like sleeves. cuffs his shirts. I'm and like, oh, like, that's a tough oh, dude right there. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, feel feelings. I'm feeling Henry Cavill yeah. in that. Even yeah. with the mustache and everything. I yeah. wish I could feel Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfectly stable in my sexuality, but I look at it and I go, yeah. well, it's yeah. like you're, I don't eat hot dogs, but when you're in a baseball game, you go, well. <laughs> <laughs> They're better in a baseball game. <laughs> Henry Cavill's just better. Just and then his Witcher. Yeah. Yeah. He'd Sorry, have been a good we went bond. this way. No, that's fine. <laughs> He'd have been a good bond. Uh, Idris Elba would have been a good bond. I think he's a little too oh, old, though. That either of them could be great, James Idris Bond. Elba, we just, what did we just watch Idris Elba? Oh, Suicide Squad. Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Yeah. Do we have any good, positive, upbeat, great stories about, about something we bought? Yes. <laughs> uh, it's a it toy down. show. Okay. Frank bought this, but I'll tell the story for him. Uh, one of the It's a Toy Shows. Uh, typically, the, the great thing about doing It's a Toy Show, free to vend, right? Mm-hmm. 5 a.m., people are pulling in with their cars and starting to set up. Well, we don't charge the vend, but we do walk around with our flashlights. So what do you got? Yeah. Our noses are in those tubs yeah. first yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so a uh, guy was set up at a toy show, and uh, he was a teacher in South America. Bought some stuff when he was there and flew home. Brought out, laid on the table, all of the South American secret... Um, Superpowers. superpowers. Wow. Yeah. Which, if you know superpowers, the grails are the South. Just like with right. Star Wars. Right. Or G.I. Joe. And yeah, My Little Pony. Right. Yeah. So uh, he's got the, like the, the weird Riddler figure he and had, stuff. Well, and El Rayo, which is the Superman. he has Superman. an El Rayo. On card. Mint. And Frank does the thing. Yeah. What's your happy number? And he's like, I'd like to get 50 bucks a piece. And Frank's like, I'll give you 100 bucks a piece. Guys, for not, you know. Yeah. Well, then he gets El Rayo graded. It's a $5,000 piece. Yep. You know what I mean? At that point, it's more nail. Hmm. So that kind of thing popping at a show like that, that, that yeah. a, guy, a te- got teacher in South America, yeah. I'm just buying these because they're cool, but I never did anything yeah. with them. He was happy. He made hundreds of dollars, mm-hmm. you know, and Frank was happy. He made thousands of dollars. <laughs> uh, I can't think of any like interesting toy collecting because usually it's a childhood collection. Yeah. So I can't think of like anybody who like snuck into someone's house and stole some stuff and brought it to us. <laughs> Or I can't talk no. about that. What? Right? Did that even come from? Yeah. Well, there no. are there are so legendary we went, comic collections that came out, but we didn't buy it. We did go to a toy buy once. All that guy with all the Star Trek stuff just had like a Glock chilling on the on the corner of his. Of oh his no, that was so that was Bowen statues in Atlantic City. That was a different collection. It was the other guy with the gun? Oh, the Italian guy who I was like talking all Italian with. So just so when I'm around thing. Italians, uh-huh. boy, do I get Italian? Oh boy, does he gobble? I don't know why I feel like I'm around my family. Yeah, so he he they're over there in the <laughs> corner right, the talking about gobble and I there's like a Glock just. On there next to his, in between his playmates, Star Trek playmates. Which is weird because he lived. So he this is that's nice the second gun. Yeah, he lived in a nice neighborhood. Yeah, we went to a collection where we were buying like you know statues are very expensive, mm-hmm. and the guy lived at like a, in a, one of the buildings in Atlantic City yeah. at a high rise. And we don't go to any collection with money in our pockets because you never know what you're walking into. And sometimes you're walking in, you're buying statues, you have maybe a couple grand in your and, pocket. And where we are, you're never more than ten minutes from an ATM, you know, wah, wah, convenience you know. store, yeah. Wawa. Bank. Yeah. So we go in there, and the guy's got a gun on the table, and we, me and Frank are like, "Oh <laughs> man, what what's going on?" And he's like, "Oh guys, don't worry, man. It's just that neighborhood." And we're like, "Okay, man. You know, yeah. he, he was cool, but right. it put us at ease." There's tons of dude, just hoarder houses we've been in, oh, yeah, where man. I couldn't fit. Like I had to wait at the door, and Penelope had to shuffle out the boxes to us, the, and then um, I would go from the door to the truck. And the best part about that was that most of the stuff was in the basement, and the ceiling of the basement was literally like an inch. Yeah. It was me and the wife downstairs. We were both a little little. Folks. Thank God it wasn't the kind of hoarder. <laughs> like it wasn't cockroach. Hoarder. Oh no, it yeah. was just. It was so like much. they just bought the stuff. Yeah, they bought like there was like cases of toothpaste because it was a deal. You know, pe- yeah. the sickness of yeah. people. Yeah, uh, there's so many. I I can't. I mean. We bought so a few years ago. Milky was a good collection. Uh, we name every collection. We name every collection. Okay. Yeah, the Milky collection. Why? Where? So I don't even. I don't even. Frank <laughs> said <laughs> Uncle Milky. Uncle Milky about some. He said somebody was my Uncle Milky. He's just ma- Frank makes stuff up. Okay. A yeah. lot. Yeah. Milkovich. Uh, uncle Milkovich. Uncle, my, my uncle. He his said uncle, his uncle Milkovich played the Gorn yes, in Star Trek. He, that's, Complete lie. And it became complete this whole fabrication thing. because yeah. I think there was a Gorn. Toy there, there was okay. a, gore, a Gorn toy he, in the lot. Yeah. In the beginning, when we were yes. first buying collections together, I would, I would be like, "Wow, your uncle was in Star Trek." Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. yeah. His uncle Milky. To this day, we call Frank Uncle Milky. Sometimes so I, just so for shits we call that the Uncle Milky collection. But that collection was literally it was the, one of the first collections we ever bought with Frank. Yep. And it was an entire house full of toys. And when I say wow. an entire house, the bathroom on top of the toilet, toys in the bathtub, 
toys. And I don't again, think it was the bathroom they used. I think it was right. the it second just, bathroom. Listen, yeah. I didn't see another bathroom in that place. <laughs> again, no, it wasn't like disgustingly dirty because I'd get really no, skeeved. No, not at yeah. all. It was just packed. Just a collector, yeah. And We've, uh, uh, those yeah, are the, the mega collections. Like yeah. stuff like that is – typically I'll say to somebody, well, how much do you have? Can you come to us or are we coming to you? Yeah. We Last year we drove to North Dakota for a G.I. Joe collection. Wow. Yeah. We got a little minivan, and yeah. it was during the height of COVID. Yeah. So we're like, we're not going to stay at hotels. We threw a uh, futon mattress in the back of a minivan yeah. and stayed at campgrounds. Awesome. And it was amazing. It was awesome. Hmm. We sat in the shore of Lake Superior, man, and like yeah. watched the you know the great. water. Right? It was cool. Water. Because I'm from South Jersey, it's yeah. water. water. It's that gobble ghoul Italian coming out of you again. No, it's not coming out. <laughs> so, like, like there's a weird, a weird like story that I have related to that, and and Frank probably bought stuff out of this collection. But um, a guy had bought a ton of toys in like New York City, and he brought them to Columbus one time, and it was all like, uh, it was a guy who was like a model builder, but he bought like any kind of toy that was based on a real airplane. He's all in the military jets, oh. and he was like customizing them. But he would buy, like, extras of them. So, like, the, the G.I. Joe Extreme Warhawk plane or whatever that yeah. was, he had, like, six or seven of the them P-51 still, in, Mustang. Yeah, yeah. still in the box. But there was, like, one or two there that had been custom painted. kit bashing or something. Yeah, and yeah. so he would just buy up these things. Oh. And it, like, that was, like, a really odd collection. So that was the kind of yeah. thing I was thinking of. But it, it, That sounds a lot you know, like, the, like a weird... the dental, the dental, uh... We bought a collection of all kinds of airplane stuff okay. from a gentleman oh, from who the passed away yeah, yeah. from the basement. He was a model of, builder. He was a model builder, but he was so meticulous and did all these things because he also did like dentures and cast and for teeth. Cast for teeth. So he, he had like a that, yeah. unique he skill. Did, and he did like a Sam, Stan Winston kinds of stuff with like Chewbacca outfits you and things Columbus. like that. You mentioned Columbus. Uh, it's so a big fr- flea market. I'm not an early, but yeah, Columbus okay. is a this big area. flea market in yeah. New Jersey and it's, it's known for toys and collectibles, right. basically. Yeah. But. Because it's known for toys and collectibles, it's at not 5 the a.m., there's 17 it, toy yes. and collectible people 3 out there. 3 a.m. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they all have fins and dun, 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 dun. You know, they're all sharks. So Frank goes – and here's the thing about our partner Frank. He's been going to Columbus so long that the, the typical dealers that – you know, most of these people that sell are they, – they do house cleanouts or they go to yard sales yeah. and they find this yeah. stuff. Well, they just hold stuff and they're like, hey, Frank. Yeah. And I, Frank walks I over to him and they say, I got toys for you. Yeah. It's It's – if if you're not you don't have people doing that for you and you're out there trying to like run to the next thing get in front of the people that are in front of you it's I don't I can't deal with that you'll stress. get elbowed and, like, be, literally. but that also ties into like what your grail is because there's stuff Frank's looking for and he's looking in bulk yeah and then there's like like I'll, I'll I sometimes say I'm a bottom feeder like when yeah. I go to the flea market if well, I you're find, a collector if yeah, I you're find a collector. two accessories you're not and right, dying and by that's it. exactly it so yeah. if I find two accessories I need I had a great morning that's awesome and so. So you can you can live in that space if you're yes. not yeah. trying to buy for a store. Uh, see, I go out there and buy two things. I'm like, man, I got up at 5 a.m. Right. It's not worth it. Right. right. Yeah. So and it becomes like a whole different I still situation. enjoy the hunt. Yeah, yeah. But that's where our hobby that we love turns into Stress. Work. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it's where us being collectors has turned to a – that's a stressful And it's actually funny. It. Like I mentioned earlier, yard sales. I, I love yard sales to this day. I have great memories of going to yard sales. But when we go on yard sales, I have to say to him, we're going for fun. Can we not get up at 3 a.m.? Can we not be stressed out? There's a map and, and I, GPS. I just want to turn I'm it off. I'm also competitive, so I think to myself, <laughs> man, there's going to be some chucklehead leaving this yard sale with an armload of cops and crooks, yep. and I just missed them, and I and it hurts me. You know, not I, why can't I have those? Yeah. You know, you, it's it's hard. Sometimes it is hard to turn off that that it is. the shopping. Well, here's for the, the thing: store. we made it so we need it. You know, we're not buying because we we yeah. just want to put it on our shelf. We're like right. we're buying because man, we need this and stuff. Like Justin said earlier, you know, it's easier. I, I fucking hate part time. It's easier. <laughs> it's easier when somebody <laughs> has a, a real job. This is all that we do. Yeah. yeah. We're not when I when the part timers get to me. And and listen, it is what it is. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. No, it's you. fine. When when my store closed down and, and I had the opportunity to be full time Farpoint, that was the moment and we've yeah. never gone back. And we never will. I'll never work for a, a real company again. Uh, I want to I, shout out to another yeah. couple that does exactly what we do in there. Okay. Uh, Jerry Maria and yes. Tinkerbee. From Tinkerbee. I love That's Tinkerbee. Another husband. We love well, not, Jerry they're not married, Maria. but another couple. They might yeah. as well be. Uh, that have a store <laughs> mm-hmm. and and they, they both do. live it yeah. all the time. Not there's not one of them isn't working a full time job and they're fantastic people. We are like kindred spirits with them. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I talked about the New Jersey dude, there's like nine in a Literally. sixty mile radius. Literally. There's like nine, nine. toy collectible yeah. shops. 
And some are like unspoken of, like we don't like to, you know, they have a, <laughs> different people have different uh, different um, things yeah. they're known for yes. or known or known badly for. Uh, but for the most part, we're we're, we're pretty camaraderie crew. Not, now, now that being said, um, I just saw a sealed flag go into Luke and Cade's yesterday or day before yesterday. I was like, "Damn, motherfuckers!" Yeah. <laughs> but that's just the way it is, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And they they sold it that day well, to that, another and that's dealer. How that happens, yeah. 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 I, why would we would have put it up and like no not for sale that's, that's the museum piece yeah. part of the exhibit thank you yeah. <laughs> but you know you can't help because you can't help but be a little bit green or you're not you're yeah, not passionate of about it of course of course yeah. I mean that happens to everybody it, like like we were saying at the flea market or a toy show there's always that person walking by with something you're like damn, damn. and it's usually Frank <laughs> when you're oh my god so when you're walking to a toy show say you're going to like a, you know retrocon or something and yeah. you're walking up and somebody's walking out the door with an armload of stuff you're like oh that's good stuff man yeah. I wish I had yeah. seen that yeah. attorney uh, so actually one of the guys that works here Paul Truitt when I was a kid his dad was the guy that I was always like, damn, we would go, my mom and I would go to yard sales when we were kids, or when I was a kid, and I would always hope to find, like, you know, vintage Star Wars stuff. And his dad w was, you know, selling and reselling a lot of toys. And if if Paul and his dad were leaving, I was like, there's nothing here. Let's turn around, Mom. <laughs> That's awesome, you know what Frank. I mean? I was like, oh, you know. Yeah. yeah. So Frank uh, got, some some people dislike Frank, I think, because A lot he of people would, dislike Frank. I was trying to be nice. But Frank's um, very good at what he does. He he would go into the shows and be able to, because he knows everybody, yeah. get in and buy the stuff and They leave. would let him in early yeah. Yeah. while the vendors were setting up. So most, or he would get a table. And, yeah, or he'd get a table to, and, yeah. and just put like this on it. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, all right, I have a table now. I can walk around and shop the other vendors. Listen, you can't, uh, you can't knock the hustle, man. No, you can't knock the hustle. Yeah, no, I've, we, we've had it. We, you guys were talking about Jeremy Reeve. Like my one buddy Nick buys a lot of GI Joe parts off of them, and, yeah. and and really does a lot of business with them. And there's been times at like NJCC where they've had a tub of parts behind the table, and people are begging to look at them. They're like, nope. As soon as Nick looks through it, yeah. and we show up, and Nick looks through it and buys a ton yeah, of stuff, and then like, yeah. here you go. A lot it's, of another, it's customer loyalty. Uh, perfect example. Uh, and 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 what you're saying is totally true. Uh, relationships in this business mm -hmm. are everything as well. Um, that flag that uh, you know was at that shop. Yeah. Um, another dealer saw the flag, called another dealer because they yeah. have a relationship and they buy things from each other. So, it, in relationships with customers who come in, and we have specific thing. Rocky is is. I was just thinking about Dr. Fossil actually talking about oh my relationships. God. So um, I this this is great, and this really helped launch when we opened. It really the did. Location. So um, we met at the Delaware Toy Show. If you're familiar with toy shows, there's mm -hmm. at the Nurse Shrine. Yep. There's normally a really big toy show, three or four times a year. I think once a season, twice a year, summer and winter. Uh, Oktoberfest. Okay. And uh, don't correct me. April it's fine. <laughs> Just keep yeah. going. Um, and uh, this was before I was really majorly collecting ponies. Okay. This is very early in the whole collecting thing. And uh, Justin was like, you know, let's just check this out. It looks really cool. Let's just check it out. So I go and we're, we're walking around and there's this older gentleman. Um, looks exactly like Dr. Hammond from Jurassic Park. Spend no expense. Down to the dinosaur belt buckle. Like, mm -hmm. I thought he was Kyle's playing, but it, it turns no, out. I, I know who you're talking about. Turns out oh, he's great. a, yeah. awesome. turns out he's so a paleontologist. So um, he had some My Little Ponies out for sale. And I noticed, now just knowing a little bit about it, I noticed that one of them was kind of rare. Okay. So I was like, sir, excuse me, um, that you have that in there for a dollar. That's at least 20, 25 bucks. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, it's got the wings. You put the wings in and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, that's really great. Thank you so much. It was a flutter much. pony. Mm. Thank you so much. And it had the wings. Uh, thank you so much. It, it, why don't you go ahead and just take whichever one you want as, as my thank you? And I'm like, oh, no, sir, I couldn't possibly. Like, I don't collect My Little Ponies now. I have mine from when I was a little girl, but I don't collect My Little Ponies. And he's like, no, please take one. And I'm like, well, just one wouldn't hurt. So that began our relationship with his name was Ed. Typical beautiful move by a toy dealer because that's just getting, oh he you, hooked me you get him hooked <laughs> you get him, hey, take this G.I. Joe oh you yeah know. first uh, one's free exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. the rest uh, you know I, and that well, I'll started, see you again don't worry that started our relationship with uh, with Ed who it, it doc, called himself Dr. Fossil mm -hmm. he's a paleontologist he's a scientist he's a teacher and on the side he would do the toy thing and he's, he was a fantastic person uh, not we really hit just, it off with Ed we, 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 we had a great relationship and friendship with Ed it, and he loved you he for whatever reason Ed loved me. I don't know if it was the My Little Pony. I don't know if it was the Baroness costume. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but Ed absolutely loved me. So Ed was a, we loved a, Ed. a toy dealer as well for years yeah. and years and years and years. Always set up. He, he, was a, he was a fixture at shows, especially the Nurse Ryan shows. Okay. He was from Delaware. Ed passed. And Ed's best friend, Dale, called us and said if anybody was going to get Ed's collection, 
we know we should go to you guys. Man, I don't even like talking about it. I'm you. starting to cry, actually. Ed uh, Ed had started collecting when his son was young. Okay. Um, and they would collect Star Father Wars and together. Father son collecting together. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. Um, you know, his son grew up and grew out of it, and Ed kept that nostalgia feeling because of how he would feel buying toys with his son. I yeah. have Ed's Steel Brigade f- uh, yeah. file card. Oh, nice. Framed I'm getting chills up just thinking about That's Ed. Cool. So uh, Ed passed away in January, and we opened our, our standalone location. July. In July of that year, and a lot of the stuff in yeah. that store when we reopened was all from Ed's mm. personal collection, and a lot of his store. He had he yeah. had show stock as well, mm-hmm. and we ended up with. I all wish of it. we'd have had the museum element going then, because a lot of it would have ended up as museum. Displays. We do still have quite a number of pieces. Uh, yeah, well, definitely. I mean, um, and listen, his GI Joes became my GI Joe collection. That pal toy Death Star, you you couldn't yep. pry it out of my cold dead hands. Literally, that was Ed's. And that's where another thing about relationships. You know, it, Listen, it, it gives added value to the item sure. for you personally. Yeah. yeah, you can't do this if you're not a people person. Uh, if you can't, or if you're married to a people person. <laughs> if you can't, uh, okay, cast a spella. What, what did you call yourself earlier? The the, the, the I didn't call myself Catra. Catra. Caddy. Because she's caddy. Hmm. Uh, you can't do this if if you have to be able to have relationships with people. Yeah. You got to be kind of likable. We part of the experience of the store is us. I believe that. Mm-hmm. And there are stores you go to where part of the negative aspect of the experience is the is the maybe the proprietor. Well, or, that's where you get the comic book guy stare, totally. stereotype. Totally. The stereotype is, is Everybody real. Everybody was a kid in a comic yes. book store being yeah. told they didn't know anything about comics totally. or that they weren't oh, cool or whatever. Oh, that's stupid. Right. I once asked uh, someone behind the counter, hey, do you guys have any My Little Ponies? And the guy said, ew. We People who like that stuff, we take them outside and shoot them. And I was like, goodbye. I flipped over the rack there and <laughs> no, didn't. kicked it's, over it's a It's ridiculous display. to feel that way. I mean, they're toys. It's it just the old school vibe. It has hair yeah. there or are still some, thigh master thighs. Some of the old guard doing this, but really yeah. it's, it's the new generation is kind of taking over. Frank's in the middle there with the old guard. and The, the old guard called him the new kid. And now it's it, now, we're the next generation. Yeah. Um, but there's some old guard people still doing it. You know, yeah. you know they are what they are. Mm. Yeah. have no idea how to internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lifestyle, man. We live this lifestyle. We do. It's our, our house looks exactly like the store. And I know that that's hard to believe, but it looks exactly like the store. <laughs> so uh, I hosted a baby shower for my girlfriend's brother and his baby mama. I figured with the baby mama too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it ended up being a rainy day. We planned to have it like mostly in the yard and stuff like that, but it was turned out to be a rainy day. So it was inside. And it was all people that have only met me a few times, like at other people's houses for social things. And everyone just kept going, you have so much stuff. It's so <laughs> neat. My my girlfriend's aunt came out. You should out, open a store. My, my girlfriend's aunt came out the bathroom. She's like, so there's stuff everywhere. And when I went in the bathroom, I thought, oh, it's just relaxing in here. And she goes, then I looked above the stuff. mirror and you have all those little soap guys up there. I was like, yeah, they're shampoo <laughs> bottles, you know. And she's like, and you have old Band-Aid boxes. I'm like, yep, those are. Are, are they themed? Yeah, you know, there's they're, they're, yeah. G.I. Joe Band-Aid yeah. box and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Yep. Toothbrush. That's how the bathroom's decorated. I'm like, there's, there's toys in, I think. Every room of the house. Yeah, have fun yeah. dusting. Yeah. You know, That's, we have yeah. now taken to uh, buying. So the one difference between the store and how we live is the store has like very clean glass, clear fixtures for the museum yeah. and for the display. Uh, at home, we tend to buy now antique dark wood. We're trying it's to a little class classier, a little. but then yeah. inside the antique dark wood vintage <laughs> display cabinet are like five dollar Conan figures, Robin and, you know, Hood, yeah. where it should be like. Plates and yeah. you know uh, whatever else people I, Egyptian the, things. I don't even. What, 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 what do real collectors collect? <laughs> Civil Egypt, War memorabilia. Egypt, no Egyptian things. Just stick yeah. with that. I, I like have that. multiple <laughs> hutches in my house that should have dishes in them, but yes. have action figures. Well, Antiquities. Those, those plate rails at the back are perfect for carded action figures. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. There's yeah. a secret for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and and the other thing with that house party was that the whole time people were making comments. My girlfriend just kept going, and this isn't the toy room. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the toy room. And this isn't what's not displayed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How much do you have that's not displayed? A fair amount. I mean, not I, – I, Why? It's hard to put – You space, run out of space. space. Also, some things – like 
sometimes I have a plan for how I want to display something and I'm not there yet. Same. So that. like when I bought my house. My G.I. Joe collection. Yes. And my G.I. Joe guys are not on display. I, know, I, have, I have some of the plan, though. Some of the vehicles. Yes. So <laughs> like when I bought my house, I had planned that the, the toy room was going to be vintage Star Wars and vintage G.I. Joe. And combo. all the G.I. Joe stuff was like put away with their accessories and things like that. And I was still getting the last few pieces and, and you know, I'm still looking for accessories and whatever. But it was it was like I'm renovating the house and painting things and getting carpet. And then I got some shelves and I wasn't ready to put the G.I. Joe stuff out because I want to build like a thing to put the flag on. And then it's like, oh, well, I just got this thing off eBay. I'm just going to put it on the shelf for now. And then suddenly now there's He-Man <laughs> stuff on the shelves. Yeah. yeah. And, and now it's like, well, <laughs> that was where the G.I. Joe stuff was supposed to go. And, it, and you just run into that kind of situation. Uh, you know, some of the stuff I have that's not on display is just really junky toys. Like, yeah. Or stuff you, know, you like that, you know, is where to put it. Yeah. Right. Or, or it's just not really that displayable. Like stuff I picked up at yard sales that it's incomplete and there's not a whole lot of it. So maybe that's not really display worthy. I do – like in my dining room, I have a, a hutch that is just random stuff. And I, I like that aesthetic also. Me like, too. It's and just that's a Frank vibe. A little yeah, bit of everything in there. But other areas, I, I have like a display case that's just Mass Universe Classics. Yeah. And oh, I have that's, a shelf oh, that's, that's just so vintage me, man. My thing yeah. is like, all right, my My Little Pony collection. My Little Ponies are this big and you can fit a bunch of them. There's thousands. You, you can mm-hmm. fit a bunch of them on a shelf. But then you have Paradise Estate, which is the Eternia of My Little Pony. It is as big as this table, literally. And it's got, we can put water in the back. How do you display that in a manner yeah. that does it justice? Well, you need to have a room for and, it. You and you run into those things. Like I, yeah. I had the flag set up and then I was getting um, air conditioning work done and I took it down because it was like where the air conditioning thing was. And I was like, I don't want these guys like doing something stupid. Took it down. And then somebody gave me a display case. And I was like, this would fit so perfectly and here. And a flag doesn't fit in the display case. Right. Well, then that's where the Motu Classics guys are. Yeah. And the flag didn't get put back up because now I'm like, well, I'm going to build a thing for that. Well, that didn't happen. You yeah. know? And you just run into those problems. That's why I don't do G.I. Joe vehicles anymore. I had a, I actually had a fantastic G.I. Joe box collection. Okay. Open box, but the tons. Back before things went crazy because I could have retired. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, we moved and having not having the space to display the vehicles in the boxes, they take up so much space. And I love the vehicles in the boxes. But uh, just figures now. It's just all I can I can muster. Uh, it's it's space. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it comes down to space. Yeah. And priori- prioritizing. You know, what's more important, my D&D collection or My Little Ponies? Well, my D&D collection. Isn't it our D&D collection? Well, yeah. the books are mine and the toys are yours. I think we've kind of come to that. Okay. No. I can live with that. No, actually, I want half the toys, too. Yeah. Can't have it, my fortune. It's really time. tough, though. I, I was just looking at some of my Marvel stuff. And I have a whole bunch of, like, you know, my favorite characters in multiple scales. I have a bunch of the Toy Biz X-Men figures, which I played with as a kid. And then I bought a bunch of those characters in the like three and three quarter inch size that they were doing for a little Marvel while. Marvel Universe. Because I love yeah. that. Because yeah. I lo- yeah. that's, that's my, my preferred scale. scale. Mine yeah. too. And then they stopped making those. Did you so, ever see any of our dioramas? I've seen some of them, yeah. Okay. Then they we, we've touched on I can't wait to like Marvel <laughs> Universe see them more. And, yeah. Well, they're gone. They're, yeah. oh. That's when we were in the mall. We had a big mall yeah. window. Right. We left the mall. When the Marvel one was there. That, too, that's yeah. Marvel Universe. That was that yeah. scale. Yeah. Yep. There's no, we can't do it in a window at this place because it's the sun will just destroy everything from the window. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't have the space to make a diorama. Everything has to be either retail or museum. Yeah. I don't know. Someday. Anyway, I'm sorry. So So, Marvel Universe. And then I have some Marvel Legends of the same character. So I'm I'm sitting here going like, why do I have Professor X in three scales? Because it's cool. It's cool. But like, should I just go, okay, Marvel Universe, you can't expand that collection. I I don't, I don't have all of the ones I want in that size. Like- and that becomes so one of those keep situations. Your favorite character then. Yeah. Or if you can decide that. Like I love collections where somebody's like, oh, I'm a Snake Eyes collector. Yeah. So they just have a Snake Eyes or Batman. Yeah. And it's all different scales and it's pops right. and it's different. I like the way that the eclectic fun. looks of that. Yeah. But if you're doing like complete toy, if you're doing Marvel Legends, Marvel Universe, right. that gets to be just insane. There, there becomes a point with like things like Marvel Legends where you can't focus on a figure and enjoy it. You kind of kind of stand back, and the the collection is so overwhelming. Look at You're just everything. looking at a collection. Yeah. You're not even focusing on the individual things. You're just being like, "Wow, that's a lot of stuff." Yeah. Sometimes less is more with collecting. My, <laughs> so my loose complete Joes, you know, at, at uh, Michaels they have bat boxes. I'm sure you've seen the, yeah. the baseball bat. People put pops in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. good for pops. pops. So that's going to be my GI Joe thing. I'm going to LED each one. 
and hanged him because I think you fit 25 per. And I think with G.I. Joe, there's like 300 and ish. Okay. Between three and 400 individual figures to complete the collection. So that's 25 goes into 300. I don't know the math, like 70, <laughs> 77 or something. I don't know how many bats, the boxes that is. Three, 25 goes into 12, 16. I think it's like 16 boxes or that's something. That's a lot. Okay. It's a lot of boxes. <laughs> but not crazy. It's like a nice wall, yeah. you know, and that's going to be how I did the G.I. Joe's. But it's going to be at the house. Like, there's no G.I. Joe museum at the store. Okay. It takes up too much space. Yeah. And that's well, where it. it gets weird. Like, yeah. what do we want from our personal collections to come into the store? Um, our He-Man collection, my sister and mine's He-Man's collection, is probably going to end up in the store at some point. But it's going to take up a whole case. As a museum piece, but it's going to take up a lot of space. Yeah. Because it's How do you massive. feel as a collector going into a store and seeing a thing that's like a display of a museum, and they're like, no, you can't buy that. That's a museum. <laughs> it's definitely tough. I mean, there are... There are t- pl- some sometimes it's done better than others. I would say because there are places where like it's really obvious like this one section is like a, a thing, yeah. and then there's other places where it's like in the in the display case that seems to be for sale. Oh, one there's like random there. items. Yeah, oh, no, that's not never. for sale. Yeah, that's really frustrating. Um, it can be good, but it, yep. it is tough because sometimes there's that thing that you that's the thing I've been looking yeah. for, and it's not for sale. That that can be hard. So we make yeah. it very obvious. We have like. Tags like yeah. a, 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 yeah. a card, like you'd see at an actual museum, like describing the, this. You know, Star Wars Kenner. 19- and you guys were saying that basically you have the collection, the museum, and then you have the, the, the items ones for sale yeah. underneath. Exactly. We always try to have stuff from the exhibits also available for sale, so that people don't leave. Super so when mad, we talk they can't about have anything. <laughs> yeah. when we talk about like where we're located, which we have that a lot of people, places don't have, we are on the way to a tourist destination, and. The museum, if there, if we could find a way to monetize, I, I would hate to charge admission. I don't think I would yeah, ever want to do that. That's tough. <laughs> unless we were like gigantic, you know, unless you could spend a half a day. Um, but we'll, so we'll always have toys for sale. But taking advantage of being a destination just to come look and no stress to go by, I think that's yeah. a cool thing mm-hmm. as well. And maybe buy a refrigerator magnet or a, yeah. you know, a bumper sticker, bumper sticker, t shirt. Yeah. I went to Farpoint Toys and all I got was this crappy t-shirt. Yes. They had no toys for sale. I just got a t-shirt. <laughs> I needed to do that. I couldn't buy any toys, but I got this shirt. Well, thanks for coming on, guys. This was That's actually really Thank great. Yeah, we Thank love you it. so much it, for having it's us. It's neat to hear the the ins and outs of the toy buying yeah. and selling industry. I mean, in the comments down below, let us know if, if you realize that this is harder than it looks. <laughs> you know, it's not all fun. Yeah, I know we it's didn't mostly fun games. I hope but... we didn't whine too much. Uh, oh, no. It is a great job. Yeah. Um, the payoff is we can't save a dime, but someday that museum will be our 401k. Yeah. You know, that's, that, that's that what is it is. Hope. It's that's stuff. We're able to put stuff away. Yeah. That, that is the hope. Or someday the stuff won't be worth anything, and you know, well, the, the climate point, or uh, yeah, exactly. Mad Max or the insurrections will, be will happen, and I'm ready for the Mad Max too. So yeah, I mean, if we have to trade our comics for gasoline, then that's okay. So be it. It's our grand reopening, and it's a toy show. <laughs> are on September 4th. Uh, that's that's Labor Day weekend. Uh, we are in Mays Landing, New Jersey, on Route 40. Historic Route 40. Uh, we are at uh, FarpointToys.com. You can find us at Farpoint oh. Toys on. Everywhere. Everywhere. Literally everywhere. Yep. Um, uh, every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern yes. time, we do a live claim sale where we just sit and talk and maybe sell something. So it's, it's not so really a claim we, sale. We like it's to say, talk sale. come for the toys and stay for the conversation. That's what we like yeah. to say. That's at 5 I o'clock. I sing a lot. Oh, God, does he? <laughs> I do uh, the impressions. Stallone impressions, Arnold I, impressions. I have my eye roll perfected at this point from all I've, of that. Yeah, your eye roll. She just rolls her eyes at me. I do. And, and um, never stops. But we're, we're a cross-platform. We're YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook simultaneous. Yep. Simulcasting. Yeah, you can watch us on all those platforms. Yeah. So. Maybe we'll keep doing this. <laughs> God, we got to reopen and deal with customers again. Yeah, I don't want to do that. We didn't talk about customers. Next time. <laughs> all right, thanks for hanging on the peg for, with us and check back for more episodes. <laughs>